Right, we're going live. <laughs> Folks, welcome back. I don't even know what we're going to talk about, but we're going to talk. I'm not going to keep you guys waiting any longer. Guys, we have the Pokemon plumber himself. Let's go. What's up, man? Introduce Let's yourself. Go. Tell us what's up. What's up, everybody? When, when was I here last? How long ago was that now? Man, months. Oh, no. Are you freezing? Months. Is the Wi-Fi shit? You're good. You're good. I don't, good. I'm happy. All right. We're good? You're good. All right. So I didn't hear anything because it just froze. Oh, okay. No, so I didn't really say anything, so don't worry about oh, it. Okay. Um, no, guys, so I've been I've been meaning to have him back back on for a while, but uh, he's been building his brand new house and doing all the, the contracting and basically himself. And obviously behind him has his, you know, he had to show me up and, and just make the most massive Pokemon display behind him, which is epic. But uh, no, he's finally all moved in his house, got it all together, got us this place where we're ready to go, man. So take it away. Whatever, whatever you want to tell everyone about yourself. If you guys don't know, uh, Nick's got a huge Instagram following. Um, I left the Instagram at the top of the description. Um, and uh, that's where he does a lot of his posting. Doesn't do like the YouTube thing. But um, definitely go check that out. I mean, he's got some of the grails of the grails. And it's, uh, it's getting more wild by the day. So take it away, man. So I love my, uh, I love my slabs, of course, but I'm a, I'm a huge sealed guy. Whoever wasn't here last time, I, I just love sealed always. I've been collecting since, uh, the sun, moon, ever detective Pikachu definitely got me back into things, opening, uh, the tins with the ultra prism in it, some celestial storm, and then, uh, unified I'm broken cosmic team up. Like they got me fully back into the hobby where I was buying one of every box and then it turned to two of every box and then it just turned to three of every box. And then I, I just was opening them, keeping them sealed. And I love looking at the way they look sealed. And then the next thing you know, um, the boom happened and I started buying case after case after case. Um, I did sell a lot of the slabs to, you know, fund this house. I didn't want to get rid of any of my sealed. I really didn't want to get rid of any of my sealed. But uh, selling the slabs definitely helped me finish my house. And now I'm in my new little kingdom. And I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to even be in this position, man. And it's that Pokemon has helped a lot with it. Definitely. So explain to some people the rationale there. Because a lot of people, you know, who are really into slabs are cringing right there. So <laughs> what made you keep the sealed over the slabs? Oh, man. So in my head, I... I, I'm very lucky that I was right. In my head, I said, uh, I can sell all of these slabs and I'll be able to buy them back at the same price, if not. Ah, dude, your, your, your internet's crapping out, man. Hold on. Let it catch up. So, so I had the Japanese 10 crystal set. Is this me doing this or? Yeah, yeah, you're you're back, you're back, you're back. I pay all this extra money for the best Wi-Fi you can get, and I'm having these issues right now. What's going on? Hey, man, wait, look, if you don't have to tell it, just don't just tell us you're broke. It's okay. <laughs> Should I hardwire this? I don't know. Um, no, you see, so you had the you had the, you were in the Japanese crystals, and I had all I had the Japanese crystals, and I had most of the English crystals. So my one buddy bought all the Japanese crystals from me. Uh, for a good price, and then I sold a majority of the English ones to my. Well, this sucks. What? Yeah, what's going on? You wanna? I don't you wanna know. Try to rejoin. Even running. The router's a hundred percent. Why don't you? Uh, just, 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 just rejoin. Let me just try to X out and rejoin. All right. I'll keep things rolling. X out and rejoin. Yeah. See if that's it. He'll be right back, guys. Sorry, we we technical difficulties start off the stream. What else is new, right? What else is new? Who's all here tonight, anyway? We got I FOMO. That girl's in the house. Sandy Kazi, what is up? We got El Dio, Jonathan, Kryptonite's cards, B One G Papa. Nikki Cards, what is going on? We got Jonathan Flint, Tough Trainer K. Got everybody's here. Celestial TCGs in the house, Donnie. Guys, it's going to be a good night. We're going to get this figured out. 
that don't worry yourself one bit. We will get this all figured out. All right. We're, we're trying to start back up. Just give them, give them a second. But no, guys, you, you already seen, you already seen the display. I mean, that, that pretty much says it all, right? <laughs> That's, Oh, uh, even even back in the in my heyday when I had uh when I had all my XY Sun and Moon product, I didn't have quite a display like that. I mean, Pokemon Plumber's got something for everyone here. You know what? While he's setting things up here, I'll, I'll just go ahead and do a, a a screen share real quick. Show you guys what we're what we're working with here. Check this out. This is his Instagram, guys. This gives you a little idea. Of some of the, some of the stuff he's uh, he he's owned or has owned or does own, like you know, just like you know, stuff like this. Uh oh, that's that's a that's a real, but like some of like the top top stuff that a lot of the people who are into the vintage or Japanese go for. Oh, he's back! He's back! All right, there you we good? go. Yeah, man, I'm just I'm just scrolling through your Instagram, showing people some of the fire. He's uh, okay. <laughs> See, the real the real fire is there. Right, <laughs> dude. Best wife in the world. Best wife in the world. All right, so let, let's hear. Let's get back to the story. All right, so you sold a lot of the slabs when you moved in the house and you kept the seal. Yes, exactly. So I uh, sold a lot of the slabs. I, um, dude, I swear to God, if it does it again, I might have to like change something. I don't know. It keeps like freezing. All right, let's. Sorry, everybody. I don't know why You're this happened. Good. I spent I spent all the money on the Wi-Fi for the boxes, so that's how apparently what's happening. Um, I sold all the slabs, right? And I said in the future I'm definitely going to have a chance to get them back, but I think the seal's going to go up, and the slabs are going to drop. So at the time, the Crystal Zard was around fourteen to uh, fourteen five, and then on the low end thirteen five, right? So I always wanted full price for the Crystal Zard. I, I wouldn't let it go; it was unlimited. So now if you look at what the crystal Zard's going for, the guy that bought it from me, he's like, I got robbed on that because now they're selling for around nine. And then the Kingdra dropped another thousand dollars. Like the Lugia went from nine to six. So all of them have dropped. I mean, if you do the whole set, it probably dropped around eight, eight, eight grand right now. So it's like, whereas all the sealed, all my sword and shield boxes have doubled, tripled, quadrupled in price. It, it's absolutely insane at this point. Now we lost Alex. I have no idea what's going on. Is it me? Yeah. Says I'm good. You're the one disappearing now, not me. Am I? Yeah, you disappeared. Dude, I'm hardwired in. There's no way. Dude, I'm telling you, this it didn't do anything. See, maybe it's not me. I'm looking at the YouTube. Are you looking at the YouTube stream? Yeah, it says everyone looks good now. Okay. Like I'm, I'm looking um, at the you're both fine. Hey, you're fine too, Kate, yeah, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, man, but like, because I mean, if you, you guys, me and uh, we, we, we talk all the time. And I'll always get calls or texts. It's like, you know, can, can you believe these prices? Can you see this? Or, you know, you'll you'll text me or call me about like, these guys that think you're crazy, you know, cause you're, you're into a lot of like the Watsi and, and vintage community too. Yeah. And like, they're calling you crazy and thinking you're crazy, giving up these slabs for modern sealed. And it's just like every step of the way you're trying to tell them, are, are you guys looking, are you seeing this? And it's like, sometimes seeing is believing. Sometimes it's still not believing. Like sometimes people are still not going to be on board. Like I, I really don't know anymore what it's going to take to get people on board to understand like this is just how this hobby runs. So my buddy Watsy Hub, right, Dom, he's pretty big on Instagram too, Watsy Hub. So a couple months back, he had, um, I think it was like three Silver Tempests, an Astral Radiance, uh, Darkness of Blaze, and Obsidian Flames. And a while back, I gave him the Obsidian Flames for free. So he's like, I'll give you this for free. And I was like, I'll take the rest of the seal. Gave me all that sealed product for 500 bucks. Like, I don't know. I, he's like, he's like, do you really want this shit? Like, he didn't care about it at all. And I was like, Tom, I'm like, I'm going to put this on a pile to the side. And I said, just watch, watch. Now, Astro Radiance, what is it? 150, 145. Darkness of Blaze, 150. 
Um, Silver Tempest, 143, 145, right? Maybe a little lower now, yeah. 130s. I mean, cases are like- Definitely high 130s, yeah. Yeah, high 130s cases are around 810 right now. I'm trying to grab a couple more. But in that short time frame where he thought it was all crap, it has all went up, you know, 10, 15%. And uh, a while ago, Dom and I have a, a relationship where- you know, I'll spend a certain amount of money and I'll give it to him for the exact amount that I paid, vice versa. Right. So he was, a, he had all the sealed product and I found the list the other day and I was like, do you care if I share this? And uh, Unbroken Bonds, Crimson Invasion, uh, Forbidden Light, Forbidden Light was revalued at $300. Burning Shadows was $320. Celestial Storm, $500. Unbroken Bonds, $400. Crimson Invasion, $200. Team up, right? Fifteen hundred. Unified Minds, four fifty. Cosmic Eclipse was my writing so bad. I think it says seven hundred. Um, and how how long ago was this deal? This deal was after what? Well, it was August, September. It was October. So literally, so, like six, seven months ago. Six, seven months, and I could literally take everything that I bought from him and make a profit. And it's because they don't believe in the modern seal. They just, there's, I don't care. Their, their point is there's so much of it. There's so much of it, but look, there's 10,000 copies of a Moonbrion and you can't even find 25 of them on eBay right now because they don't want to sell it. So if you have that many people that want it, it doesn't matter. This hobby just keeps growing. And I've been saying, so this is what made me double down with Sword of Shield. I got in at the perfect time during sun and moon. The first case I bought was a unified minds case. Boxes went up to 200 a piece. And the first case I ever bought was unified minds and it was $1,200 for the case. Right? So I was able to watch that grow. And then I watched cosmic go up to $300. And on my Instagram, there's a video when it's at 300, I said, buy as many of these as you can. Then it goes up to 400 and I'm like, I'm telling you this box is going to be insane. And then I think the last video I did on it was when it was 500. I'm still saying buy it at 500. So I was able to see all these patterns with sun and moon. And now I'm able to see all the same exact patterns with sword and shield. It's like you put a mirror, it's neck and neck. Team up, well, but you have evolving skies, which is kind of doing team up things. But the scariest part is evolving skies was printed way way more than team up and it's just still doing these things well, so, one thing we always like to talk about and i just think it's well, I'll, I'll just say it you, you give me the answer what do the big content creators like pokeball cool trainer ryan pokey rev all have in common all right so back in the day when i was like i was there wasn't that it wasn't that many poke tubers back then right and that we're not even talking a long time ago we're talking about around detective pikachu so i found pokemon revolution right and there used to be like posts of like invest in this you know invest in Yu-Gi-Oh, invest in pokemon poke of all i was watching him in the beginning i loved his investing videos right and he would always give you like sets to invest in i remember he would talk about ancient origins when i was at like 600 bucks he would talk about Phantom Forces when I was at 1200 bucks. Like, I remember watching all these guys. And it just drives me insane how all these guys have talked about investing. I mean, they're great Poketubers. Like, I have nothing bad to say about them. But I just don't understand why it's so frowned upon. What, the collecting investing comes in hand. Like, bro, I'm a Pokemon investor. Obviously, I'm a collector first. But it, it's fun. But it's just like... A, it's a gray area for a lot of these guys. They look down on investors, but the thing is like, bro, all these people, you know, of course you have the people that just want to sell and make profits, but at the end of the day, 90% of these guys, like telling you the investor collectors first, the, a person, the, an investor doesn't just say, Oh, I love Pokemon. Cause it's making money. Dude, they get in the Pokemon because they're a collector first and then they see what they can do. Like, dude, I'm yeah. uh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just like all, all three of those guys and a lot of the big guys, it's like they all built, a lot of their net worth with sealed investing. Like um, I've talked about it before, like Pokey Rev said in interviews that 99% of his Pokemon is sealed. Like cool trainer Ryan, it's, I mean, it's obvious, like his whole thing, it, he's all about sealed, you know, like a lot of Pokeballs content used to be about sealed. Like 
all of these guys, they preached and they not only preached it, but they, they did it themselves of, of sealed Pokemon investing or sealed TCG investing. They made hundreds of thousands and millions off of it. And now that it's like, it's like they're content creators and it's pack breakers or whatever. That's great. Like make your money. You're an entertainer. I have nothing against that, but it's like, don't hate on the people who are doing exactly what you did to get where you're at though. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I don't understand that part. I don't like, I mean, cool trainer Ryan, he's a man. He rips a lot of his sealed stuff. You got to give the guy credit, but, but like, that's the thing I want to do. The reason I buy so much, you know, brilliant stories. The reason why I bought so much cosmic is because dude, I have daughters. My daughters helped me get into this even more because they enjoyed opening it. Like it's going to be pretty cool in five years when I can open a brilliant stars box that I paid a hundred dollars for like that was Ryan's favorite set. She loves that more than anything, you know? And it's like, I can chase the Charizard because I have a mountain of them. So I don't care if I'm going to open one of them. It, you know, it's just, I don't like the enigma of, oh, he's, he's talking pokey investing or he's a seal collector. Like, dude, he's a collector. He's a collector. Oh, I don't give a shit. What, excuse me. I don't give a shit what anyone says. It is pretty cool to see a box that I paid $100 for it is now sixteen hundred to two grand with team up. I paid one twenty for the first box I ever got. So I mean, I'm not much of a seller, right? But when I had to sell to fund my new kitchen in my house, I was able to sell the crystals. And then I wasn't eight, like I, I own a plumbing company. I do well, but I was able to redo my entire house. And Pokemon helped me, you know, redo my entire house. So it was all because of I needed a little bit of money. I had something I love that now I want to buy again, but uh, I had the money to do it because of Pokemon and it's freaking awesome, man. You know, I don't hate on any, anyone that talks sealed investing. It, it's someone's passion. The, the amount of, the amount of effort these guys put in their videos, how can you hate on this? You know, it takes hours of research because they love what they're doing. They love the hobby and they enjoy Pokemon. If you're an investor, go invest in the S and P 500, you know, or go invest in crypto. Pokemon's just a whole different brand, man. And I, I love this shit. I just, I yeah, it's weird. Like, you're like doing the exact, you're doing like the exact same thing I did like a few years ago. Like when I sold out, you know, back in 2021, a lot of that money went to, we're doing our house. I mean, we did like literally from top to bottom, even the outside, we redid everything from the, the kitchen, the bathrooms, the flooring, the deck, the fence, like, and none of it came out of my pocket. It was all just Pokemon profits. And it's like, and, and the whole time those were making profits, they were all displayed on my shelf. I got to enjoy them every single day. It wasn't just like numbers on a paper or stock portfolio. I got to enjoy them for, for years. I got to sell them and redo my whole house with them. It's like, I know what you're saying. And then the other thing I wanted to touch on that you said like just a little bit earlier was the Umbreon VMAX thing. And I talked about it a lot lately, but I, I don't think a lot of people throughout the hobby have like really sat down and tried to like, I don't know, give it thought is redefining what a high pop report is, right? Mm -hmm. Because everyone who came you know, before like sun and moon sword and shield, it's always like, well, it's, if, it's in the, if it's over like, you know, a few hundred, it's getting higher. Definitely anything over a thousand. That's, that's too high. There's too many of them out there. I I'd stay away from that or whatever, but now it's like, well, these alt arts, right? You're seeing cool trainer Ryan open case after case, after case, after case, he can't pull the freaking blaze. I can't, he can't pull them a champ. He can't pull whatever he's going after. I mean, you're seeing these cars are street. These are some of the hardest cars to pull in the entire hobby. Like talk about gold stars and those things. These alt arts are some of the hardest cards to pull in the hobby. And the only reason there's a lot of them out there is because there's that much demand. For that's how much product is being printed. But, but not only that, you can talk about the printing. That's how much of it has been opened. If it takes that many cases to open one single card, think, and there's thousands of them out there, that's how many people are across the world opening the stuff in mass. And so when I see that much product that has the, the money to be opened, I look at it and I say, is two, three, four, five, even 10,000 that high? Is, is it really too high to, to have enough demand for the most popular era, that being the most popular card since base set Charizard to not hold value and rise in the future? That's where you have to start asking yourself those things is, well, when you look at like the amount of people who want those compared to the amount of people that want like a one, two, 300 pop card, I'd argue the ratios are similar, if not in more in favor of the Umbreon. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I mean, dude, it, that's the only thing that's scary. Like when I want to open these things in the future, I, I shit you not. I opened three booster box cases of, of this, an ETB case, right? Uh, three, three booster box cases, ETB case, uh, case of um, 
blisters and then just blisters here and there. I've never pulled this card. I pulled every alt art twice and I never pulled the moon brown once. And it, it's like the chase is awesome. And I, that's going to be something in the future too, is you have to think about how many people love this card. That chase is going to be forever. This is your modern day Charizard, whether people hate it, love it. it it's the truth. This card is beautiful. It's, it's, it doesn't matter because there's millions and millions of people that wanted to chase this card. You have my generation, my daughter's generation and Back then, all you have is our generation that wanted that Charizard. Now you have multiple generations with this card and all these people ripping product, ripping product. I don't care how much there is because everyone I talk to, a lot of people I know, ripped hundreds, maybe thousands of uh, Evolving Skies packs. So it, it, it's just you have a valid point, man. Yeah, and you know, it's just like I just feel like, you know, the, the two sides is hobby depending on what you're into. If you're into more of the the side that like, has the most chase the most people like the the largest masses like it or if you're into the more scarce niche items where there's the the, the availability is low or the, the rarities there right and i i feel like the the rarity side they don't really they don't value the, like the demand and popularity as much i think that they think it's always going to fade or as soon as things go up people are going to dump and there's not going to be enough buyers and i think something like evolutions is the perfect example when you, when you see something go from 180, 90, 100 dollars a box, no one wants it. It jumps to 300. Some people sell. It jumps to five, seven. Some people sell. It jumps to over a thousand. People start selling then. But we're always told, right? This is so mass produced. They reprinted a million times. People have airplane hangers, warehouses, storage units full of this stuff, right? If something goes from 100 to a thousand dollars, right, and then starts to set, you know, stabilize, starts to fall. Do you not think? majority of people are all going to want to rush and sell everything they have of that item to realize those 100 or 1000 X gains, whatever. Of course they're going to, but that didn't really happen. I mean, you had sales. A lot of people sold it. The price stabilized in the seven and eight hundreds though. It didn't crash. And seeing the, the amount of supply evolutions had and it stabilized, seeing the amount of pop reports, all of these cards had, they fell and now they're stabilizing, rising back up rapidly. Now that just goes to tell me, tell you like, yeah, there, there's a lot of this stuff, but there's more people that continue to want it. Yeah, no, it's, it's the truth, man. I remember the evolutions. Nobody wanted evolutions. I remember you were able to buy evolutions, $70, $80 a box. And I remember it had that little boom and went to like 100 bucks. And I ran them, my place, they had three of them, and I grabbed one. And then they went up to like 200 out of nowhere. And I remember I went back, and there was one left, and I grabbed that one, and then it was over. It just... But it's the same exact thing, man. Evolutions, look, it's stable around seven, eight hundred dollars now. I mean, I didn't sell at a thousand. I still have some, but it did the same thing. And I, I mean, evolving is. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. When evolutions came out, dude, I hated it. I, I I thought it was a knockoff of you know base set because I was able to open base set when I was younger. I know you loved it, but I well, I, I, I have I have the the opportunity to love every everything everyone else hates. Like I love Shining Legends too, and everyone hates Shining Legends. So. I love Shining Legends. That Mewtwo, uh, the Test Tube Mewtwo is one of my favorite cards. I love Shining Legends. That was one I I got to open a lot of that. That was fun. People hate that. I didn't even know people hated. Oh that. yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, the groups I'm in, I guess it, it gets a lot of hate, but I mean, I always liked it. <laughs> yeah, that's a solid set. I like that with the Mew. I, I I enjoy that stuff, man. So here know. here's the here's the question, all right? So uh, you said you got in in Sun and Moon, so I I, I came in back in XY. I mean. I, if, if I wanted to, I could probably go back if I, if I really wanted to take my take the time and like search through videos. But like, I could literally find like word for word comments, you know, videos, go to comment sections, find word for word comments. Like the sentiment in XY seems exactly like to a T word for word. Like I'm seeing a lot of the sentiment in Scarlet and Violet. What is your, what is your take on Scarlet and Violet? I mean, is it, is, is is the hype just going to end with Sword and Shield? Is this going to be dead forever? Is it going to rise a little over time as it sells out but never really be what the other eras were? Like, how do you feel about this Scarlet Violet era? So, I mean, in comparison, right? Like, look at uh, Sun and Moon base. Look at Sword and Shield base. And then look at Scarlet and Violet base. This is the only way I'm going to be able to put it, Right like so many hits in Scarlet and Violet. If you put them next to each other, I mean, I love XY base because the Blastoise and Venusaur, right? Um, but when you put these next to each other, it might not be like everyone's favorite Pokemon. I mean, you have the Magikarp, 
you had the T-Tar. You have some of those cool, um, what do they, they call nowadays? The the uh, the alts, not the alts, their art. What is Wait, what's that? Not like your, not your old arts, the other ones. Oh, the SIRs? The SIRs, there we go. So like, I love the SIRs. It's just, I don't think it's getting as much love because it's a lot of Scarlet and Violet Era Pokemon and it's not like favoritable Pokemon, right? But if you look at 151, you did get your favoritable Pokemon. But I just think like, if you look at Scarlet and Violet so far as a whole, they give you so many, so many, so many pulls, man. Like Temporal Forces, I'm a fan of Temporal Forces. Uh, I am I too. I, I think the arts are beautiful. I mean, uh, the Walking Wake, you know, the Suicune's not my like favorite, but it makes sense because it's like the past, right, with dinosaurs, and then you have your future. So, I mean, it does make sense. But I mean, if you're looking at the grand scheme of things, dude, no, no eras have ever started out with these kind of hits in here. I mean, all we need, if look at the history, right? You had Team Up, Unbroken Bonds. Unified Minds and Cosmic Eclipse in the end, right? With Sword and Shield, you had uh, Lost Origin, Silver Tempest, um, Brilliant Stars, Astral. You had Evolving Skies. But, like, the good sets come towards the end. I mean, Scarlet and Violet already gave us 151, which I think people aren't going too crazy on it because there's so much around. But give it time. I mean, Scarlet and Violet has so much potential. All they, I, I heard the next set, don't quote me on this. It's just a rumor. It's going to be an all dragon set, right? So I think that's good. that has a lot of potential. All you need is about three, two to three, or maybe four really good sets, and everyone's idea of Scarlet and Violet can change. They, listen, they're they're appeasing the the younger generation that's trying Scarlet and Violet. The game was awesome. You got to give the game credit; it was really good. But they're focusing on a lot of Scarlet and Violet error Pokemon right now, right? So now just give it a little more time. Give, we're, we're five sets in. So let's see what happens with the, the last four or the last five. I mean, it's just like, you know, if, if you would have you would have looked at a lot of those sets of Sun and Moon, in XY too, all of them, it's like all of them started out slow, right? I mean, nobody, nobody wanted Fates Collide. Fates Collide was a joke, right? Oh Back in XY, people hated Fates Collide. People, I mean – the, the XY breakpoint breakthrough, they weren't like super sorry after sets. Like, go to Sun and Moon, like Celestial Storm. Yeah, it's got a Rayquaza, but no one really cared about Celestial Storm. And, and like, uh, you know, um, I mean, Ultra Prism was short printed, but it wasn't like a super sorry after set. Forbidden Light, like all these boxes that are now four, five, six, seven hundred dollars in literally four, five, six, seven years' time. Go find me any fund out there. Right, that you can make three, four, five, six hundred percent in a matter of three, four, five, six, seven years. If they're not there, they don't exist. You have to be like a great stock picker, get lucky throwing your money in something like Nvidia or something. Like you're not gonna find these kind of gains. And when I look at like Scarlet and Violet era sets, people saying like, you know, obviously people saying like the, the good sets are coming later. So all these doesn't mean these are gonna be worthless. Like the, yeah. these sets, these sets can easily get to two, three, four, five hundred dollars relatively quickly. I like and, Paradox Rift. I could see Paradox Rift doing that too. And you could buy them for what, $500 a case right now? I mean, I, I don't yeah. know. I, but it's like everybody wants these Evolving Skies Part 2, Evolving Skies Part 2. But people don't understand. Like the reason that, see, Sun and Moon is weird because like you had Luke and Lost Thunder. So I like I like Lost Thunder because, but I didn't know better, right? And I'm chasing the right for less, Celestial Storm, Ultra Prism. I hated. I'm not a big waifu guy. So I didn't, wasn't a huge fan of that. But it's like with these Scarlet and Violet, you're still getting a shit ton of Pokemon. It's Pokemon, man. And the hits are awesome. So I'm kind of warming up to Scarlet and uh, Violet. Right now, I'm putting a lot of my money in Sword and Shield before it's too late because that's what I did with the Sun and Moon, Unified Minds. That's my example. But, dude, I bought a couple Temporal Forces cases. I'm going to buy more. I, I like Temporal Forces. Twilight Masquerade, I, I love that Greninja in it. I'm hyped for that Greninja. So, yeah. I mean, it's just everyone – is like wants that evolving skies, you know, 2.0, and they're they're overlooking everything. Like we're not getting bad product right now. Pokemon's those hearts are beautiful, man. I, I I am enjoying them, and I think they have a future. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I just I I'm I I'm think it has a future, but it's just everyone's living in sword and shield right now. They're not moving forward. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's gonna be that way for a minute, you know. Especially to all those like alt art sets, I think getting probably two hundreds or so until people want to finally 
move forward. But um, the, mew, the bubble mew is beautiful. Dude, the bubble <laughs> mew. I pulled that the other day. That card is beautiful. That's going right in my PC. It's a PSA right now. That card is beautiful. I don't care what yeah. anyone says. Like, the arts are good, man. I'm telling you, man, it's crazy. Um, one thing I, I, I was thinking about and get your take on this is, you know, and it's one thing I was like used to fight against with debating people and stuff, but it seems like everyone always has like a excuse, you could call it, for why things go up in, in this hobby, right? You know, in XY, it was, it was, well, you know, Pokemon Go, the game and evolutions and, you know, even generations that create a lot of hype, right? And then obviously it was, oh, the pandemic, free money, Logan Paul, the celebrities that created the hype, right? And what we're seeing now is after everything cooled off after 2021, 22, you know, 20 into 2022, we were seeing a resurgence, right? We saw the, you know, the Japanese boom. We saw the alt art waifu boom. Now we're seeing the alt arts boom. But after these booms, all the sealed product, they're not dumping. They're staying at their, their all-time highs, and they're continuing to stay stagnant or, or continue to rise. And I feel like Scarlet and Violet is going to be the first era where there's no special boom. There's no special thing happening. It's coming out in just a regular old market. And I feel like if Scarlet and Violet can make it rise in price and do well, I, I feel in my mind that's going to make Pokemon a staple. That's going to show everyone that, hey, this is 100% a thing. There it doesn't need hype and 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 uh, black swan events to keep it propped up or send it flying. What's your take on all that? Like going forward, like, do you think you know all that? Like just had so much to do with it, and and, and now the market's going to be you know more stagnant and low because we don't have those type of events. Or what do you think? Do we think we need that? See, the thing is, like you've been around for a while. I've been around for a little bit, and we all forget, like when we first get back in the hobby, right? Like what gets us into the hobby. One of my buddies got it. You, you, you've dealt with them. The other plumber, Joe, he got in with Scarlet and Violet, right? Loves his Scarlet and Violet sets. I've never, I, I, you can vouch how much money did he spend on opening Scarlet and Violet? So, I mean, I understand your, what you're saying is like, will there be a future for it? But like, dude, all it takes is that first card that got you back in the Pokemon. And if you're still in this hobby five years from now, you're going to want to go back to whatever Scarlet and Violet set it was and buy that set. So, I mean, if Pokemon, I mean, we'll see in it's a long haul because what, what's the study? Uh, people go into hobbies for two years and then they're out. So we'll see what happens in five years. Right. And we'll be able to tell like if Scarlet and Violet's going to do his thing, but I, I think it is, man. It's not, I mean, it, 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 we need, we need to see way more to, to tell. I think it's going to do fine, but I think once they sell off a of Pokemon Center, where are they, 160-something on Pokemon Center? Like, that'll be the nail in the coffin, the aha moment. Like, then you have this pattern that you can't even go against anymore. But you know how many people said Sword and Shield was shit? They hated Sword and Shield. This, these old darts suck. This is, you know, they overprinted it. Like all the people, this is what drives me insane. All the people that said Sword and Shield overprinted, overprinted, overprinted. I see him putting in search of boxes for cases, right? Okay. <laughs> I almost do. These are the people that have your Watsy seal. These are your people that hated on the Latios and Latias from Sun and Moon. Right. And now I see them looking for asking me if they could have a case. Right. So I, I don't know. Dude, I got in a big argument with my discord today um, because people like they get like uh, upset when I like show proof of things like I've said and people got wrong. And they think like some people call me playing a victim, like because people thought differently than me and I, you know, went against them. I'm from how a victim like they were ganging up on me, but like. No, I, I just like to show things so like people can see what people were saying and how it turned out. And so I shared a video on my Discord of a video I made, a, I don't know, a year, maybe a year and a half back of, I took clips of what a bunch of different investing YouTubers said, word for word from their videos about how how trash like modern investing would be, how it wouldn't work, how Sword and Shield was way overprinted. And I show, I show how everything's going now. But not only that, I will shout out one person because he won't care. But Dan from Catch Em All Collectibles, he made a video today or yesterday, I think it's today, where he literally he finally used the word investing and he said he's looking, he's now paying up to 95% of market value to buy your modern boxes from you to invest in them.
That's actually and he, you know, it's just like, I'm starting to see even like some of the people that I used to debate the hardest with all come around to starting to invest in modern sealed. And a lot of people I, that I debated with, they, they're not around anymore. Don't make videos or don't talk about it because it, it's just, it's to the point where you can't deny it anymore. If you do deny it, it's just like, till when, like, will 10 more years do it? Like, at what point do you finally say this? And that's why I said Scarlet Violet's kind of going to be the deciding factor. No, it's like, at what point? It's going to, dude, I don't care what anyone says. If, if Crimson Invasion, I'll take any Scarlet and Violet set over Crimson Invasion any day of the week. If Crimson Invasion can go up to 200 and some odd dollars, then you can't do these sets are a thousand times better than that set, right? Like, I, I don't know. I, I think, it, like I said, it's all the future collectors are always going to remember. Like, dude, I remember opening the Ultra Prism pack. I remember opening the Detective Pikachu tins. Like, and that's something that, like, I wasn't the biggest fan of Ultra Prism, but I'll always remember that. I mean, bro, look at me. I'm still buying Cosmic Eclipse cases today and Unbroken Bonds. I just bought a Unbroken Bonds case the other day, even at this crazy number, because I want more of it because that's what really got me into this hobby again. So, I mean, when these guys go back, you know, and look back in the day and they're like, oh, I opened Paradox Rift. I pulled that cool Garchomp, you know, that's the set they're going to want. Like, dude, I'll, I'll pay whatever it takes for a Cosmic Box. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep buying them. I have so many of them because that, like, really hooked me into Pokemon, man. What? Uh, I mean, you know, everyone always likes to talk about, like, goals and end games. Like, do you even have a goal or an end game or is it just kind of conti- onward and upwards? Onwards and upwards, bro. Like I'm into my house, everything, like I'm fully in, the kitchen's done, the bathrooms are done, we're moved in, and I was able to keep my sealed product. I got I got rid of a couple black and white boxes. I miss my Dark Explorers box, I'm not going to lie. But I was able to keep like my favorite ones, the Dragon's Exalted, the Legendary Treasures, Boundary. But like now... I'm I'm very fortunate. I'm grateful for everything I have. But now I I call my friend today, and uh, I was like, yeah, I'm back on the search again because like, dude, I'm I'm moved in now. I don't have to spend thousands of dollars on insulation, on sheetrock, on all this crazy stuff. Now I could put it back in the Pokemon. But this is one thing I will tell you: don't tell my wife. So I wasn't supposed to be spending any money. Like, we were- hold on, hold on. Let me let me stop right there. Every. <laughs> we'd be talking and he'd be telling me he's like he's like yeah i can't be spending anymore no joke like sometimes later that same day if not the next day hey, you just pick these up what do you mean you just told me you're done no no after this i'm done and this went on for like weeks i'm like dude you're like a you're like an addict or something I'm like this is my last hit <laughs> all right just, just hear me out though but listen how smart i am now i was buying astral radiance fusion strike uh, lost origin. I was buying all these at $600 a case, like two months ago. Was I not, I was literally buying these and I'm like, I can't turn down the deals. And I put like in search of posts and then more people sent me uh, stuff. And then I was buying cases, lost origin at 720, and it just kept flooding in. And I'm like, this is going to be my last chance to get it. Then I bought all the evolutions, alt arts for 900, not the moon Brown, but everything else for 900 bucks. And I was like, I saw how everything was doing exactly what Sun and Moon is doing, right? So I ended up buying, I probably bought, I'm not, you can ask Alex, and about two weeks, I probably bought another like 15 cases, right? But dude, look at it. A couple every, months every day you had another picture, like every single day it was more, I'm like, this is, this guy's so crazy, but it's so right. <laughs> But listen, I was doing, I was working at my house. I'm not even kidding from like 730 in the morning to like eight at night. And in between I'd run and do jobs because I wanted to fund the Pokemon still. And, uh, I just, it was so obvious. Like right now, if you want to touch on obvious, right. Brilliant stars and lost storage. I know you hear it on every investor's video, but it's still on Pokemon center. If you have access to Pokemon center right now, I, I was looking last night. On eBay, these cases are selling for twelve hundred dollars, eleven fifty. Just I don't know. It's like my buddy said it perfectly. My buddy Nick, he goes, "It's buying money," and, and it's the truth. You could buy one of these cases at nine eighteen after taxes and go make a two hundred dollar profit instantly. So I mean, I don't know. We'll see if these if these are still here in a couple months. And I'm like, holy shit, they did print a lot, but I don't think they're gonna be because when I ordered from Pokemon Center. Uh, my case came in and it was from the UK and UK is sold out. 
So I think they took, this is just my guess here. I think they took UK's um, stock and they put it in the US because the UK sold out. But you can see that my, uh, my Pokemon Center booster box case is from the UK. So they might be getting low. What do you think about <laughs> Paradox Rift and apparently Paldea Evolve now being out of stock at Pokemon Center? Paldea Evolves out of stock? That's what I heard. I'm, I'm going to actually check right now while we're on, but yeah, that's what I've heard. I mean, are, are they just trying? Here's my like conspiratorial idea. It's almost like they know Scarlet and Violet isn't selling as well as they want. And they're trying to create artificial scarcity. Is the only thing I can really think of because yeah, it's it's way Paradox Rift at 500, 510 a case right now. It still is, yeah. I mean, here Paldia evolved. Yeah, dude, I'm not seeing the box. Let's okay. see. Paldia evolved is sold. Or Scarlet Violet base is sold out. Really? Scarlet Violet base set boxes. Paldia evolved sold out. So. This obviously isn't like a thing to rush into. This isn't a, a FOMO, guys. Um, well, that'll, be, that'll be a set that uh, Pokemon reprints, you know? Like, I don't know about Scarlet and Violet Base, but yeah, Paldea. It, but who's buying it at 161 on Pokemon Center? Well, they, they can't be. They have to be taking their own supply and, and sending it to distributors, maybe. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the play is here, but no, this isn't like a thing where people are paying $160 per box, I don't think. No, no. I mean, it's still so early with those sets. Like, dude, we're not even a year deep on most of them. So, right. I would have don't FOMO. Don't I? I can if if you guys want Paradox Rift, I'm I'm pretty sure I can get them for like five ten a case right now. Um, Valdez Evolved is probably one of the better sets in Scarlet and Violet, but I just don't see it selling at one sixty three a box. You know. No. Uh, there's no, there's no chance. You could still get them out. I, I would, I'd be, I'd actually be taking a, a short term gain. I'd probably be dumping my cases right now if I could get yeah. one sixty three box. Yeah, just don't, don't FOMO on those. Uh, I, I, but don't, don't quote me unless something crazy happened. But I, I still see how cheap they are. And even if someone tried to price them at that price, they'll sit there forever. It, it's, it's only been a year, not even. Yeah. Don't FOMO. I can't believe it's so loud. What um I mean you go you go to some local shows like you go to quite a bit of shows every year right yeah what I mean what are some trends that you kind of see walking around talking to people like if you sell doing any selling yourself like where where are you seeing like the money and the hobby kind of flowing mostly these days oh I, dude it's it's honestly mixed because you still have a lot of people who love their slabs right you still have the people that love um their sealed me being one of them. And then singles, like uh, raw singles. I think raw singles have – my buddy does the best with the raw singles. I, I, I think that's where it's at because, one, if you have, like, a, a newer card, it's all about speculation. Will it get to 10? I, I see raw move very fast, and I was never open-minded to raw, right? Like, everything I would pull, I would grade myself, or I'd want the grade because I've had PSA damage my cards. I mean, I think the hobby's in a great spot right now. Everyone's saying it's dead, it's dead. I mean, look, everybody got their tax returns and spent buku bucks on, you know, all Pokemon product, man. Who's it's, saying it's dead? Who, who is saying that? You see so many people talk that shit saying it's dead. It's dead. How, how could they be saying that right now? Dude, you can't. Dude, that's, that's the thing. When all this was happening, the first thing I did was literally call you. And I went nuts when Fusion Strike hit $200 a box. My dog just walked in. What's up, Obi? Um, what did I say? I said it's all going. <laughs> dude, it's all going to zero, right? <laughs> no, I said, I said it's all going to the moon. <laughs> dude, and it, and it really is. It really is. I'm sorry. Oh, you distracted me. Come on. Oh, it's all good. We, we, we accept more guests. Come here, Obi. Human and furry guests alike. That's good boys. There we go. What's up? Yeah, now the dog goes on the stream. He just came no, in. It's, it's, it is incredible to see everything right now. Um, it's it's beautiful, but it's like, I, dude, I just want to talk shit to everyone that said so many negative things about Sword and Shield. Man, they're like, it's not like Sun and Moon. It's not this. It's not that. But it, it's proven. It's I mean, dude, it's proven. You can't say it's not anymore. Fusion. Strike that's like beautiful. that's like where the the disconnect comes in. So like you know, being a YouTuber, right? I I 
like you said, there's constantly more people coming in the hobby. So I had more people reach out to me through Instagram, like my discord, whatever, um, from 151 than probably ever before in this hobby since I've been in it. Like, you know, there were so many people that entered 151, had tons of questions, all the same questions you have when you come into the hobby new. And so, you know, when I make videos, on my YouTube channel, I'm constantly having to kind of like go back and, and, and do sort of like, it feels like, you know, re just redone content, but like it's new to a lot of people. And so some of the people have been with me a long time. It's boring to them, but you have to constantly have that, that, you know, struggle of, of finding stuff that like everyone can enjoy uh, what new people need, what kind of more in deep people need. But anyone who hasn't been around for a while and hasn't been following me for the past, like two plus years, you probably missed a lot. Okay. And, and the reason, you know, I can like go off sometimes is because when I came into this hobby, I was basically laughed at, ridiculed, mocked. Um, I, when I was on like debates with two and three other people, um, I was always the odd man out that like 99% of the chat was always against everything I said about modern investing. Um, it, it was seen as like an entry level investment. It was seen as like, you know, um, anyone can do it. It's a brain dead play. It's for the kids. Anyone who invests in this seriously, you'll start going deeper and you'll get into like the more niche and like the high, the low pop reports, the higher dollar stuff. And so that's why I do like to kind of, like you said, like kind of give it back to people sometimes like, Hey, you all, you all said we were idiots. You all said this, this shit wasn't investable. Don't go back and act like you didn't say that. And now that you're all doing it with us, don't act like you always did. Cause I can, I can literally pull up clips, video clips of how bad you said this play was. And it's like, yeah, you know, sometimes it does feel good to gloat a little bit. <laughs> Dude, it does, especially like I was so high on Chilling Rain. You know, I was like, dude, second most to all, all darts, bro. I had the best luck with Chilling Rain. That's like the only set that I had in that much. Like, I pulled two all darts in a box. Like, I had very good pull rates with Chilling Rain. I got lucky. Everyone's like, Chilling Pain. So maybe that made me for, fall more in love with it. But, dude, at $80 a box, right? For such an awesome, but like, see, we're talking about so many hits. These Scarlet and Violet boxes have even more hits in it, right? Like, Dude, so many hits. The cards were beautiful. The old arts, right? Like, uh, even though they were Galarian birds, the still the hits were so beautiful. The Galarian Rapid Ash, the Articuno was so that's that's a gorgeous card. And it just everyone kept shitting on the set, shitting on Chilling Rain. So now when Chilling Rain hits two hundred dollars a box, and I'm sitting on a mountain of it, yeah, I'm gonna be like, let's go, because like it's something that I just felt in my stomach that it, it was it wasn't shit. It was good. I, I I could feel it the whole time, man. Even with speaking, future speaking shows, of that card, I just missed. Yeah. I just missed a nine. Yeah, that thing. Look at the colors in it. It's beautiful, man. That Blaziken, I really wanted that ten on that one, man. Dude, the Blaziken's a beautiful card. It's just like it, it feels good when everyone looks at you like you're insane when you're saying Fusion Strike is a good set. Like that Gengar is beautiful, and then it just happens. I mean, I'm not. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here saying all these boxes are going to be a thousand dollars, right? But I see a lot in common with like Chilling Rain and Fusion Strike, uh, Lost, Brilliant, to do what like Unbroken Bonds is doing. I, 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 that's like my best comparison in numbers. Yeah, I think that's the that's the biggest um, misconception is when people say that like these boxes are good investments. It people tend to to look and say, so you think Evolving Skies is going to be worth what a base set booster box is? I'm like, yeah. no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is like back at like when it was like four or five hundred dollars. It's like I'm saying putting $500 into this per item. So say I bought, what, how many is that? It'd be like, what, 10, 20, I don't know, 20 something of these boxes is better than putting 13 or 15 grand into one base set box. Like I'm saying by percentage wise, this is a better play to have 20 something of these over one of these. And I think these are going to make you more in the same amount of time as that. And so it's like, none of these things have to get, and same thing with the cards. Like these alt arts don't have to be worth what a first edition base set Charizard is. But like the Umbreon, we've already seen it jump from like $700 to $1,200. Based on Charizard hasn't done that in the past year. And so it's like, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the best place to put your money now. We can't go back and buy things back when they were hundreds of dollars or a thousand dollars. Like all you can do is do the best with your money right now in the current market. And when I look around at what everything's selling for, it's just so easy. It's just such an easy idea. Like, well, yeah, this is, this is the best option. Absolutely. I mean, and then I, right now, like if you really want to know my opinion, I don't think Battle Styles is a bad option. at $600 a case right now. Battle Styles isn't a bad set. The Urshifus are kind of cool. The Titar, the Napoleon, like that's, it's still $600. It's an alt art set. 
the first ult art set in Sword and Shield, and it's still $600, $600 for a case. So I don't, I don't think that's that's a bad buy either right now, if I'm being honest. Yeah, it was brought to my attention too. That isn't so. Tyranitar is like one of the most popular shinings back in. Yeah. Yo, Destiny. Yeah. And it's also been a popular Pokemon in the sets that it's been in. It's like I kind of forgot how popular Titar was. Um, you know, in terms of like in the overall hobby, like as far as like S tier Pokemon go, and it's up there. I mean, it's not like the absolute creme de la creme, but Titar is it, it's loved and. I mean, just that alone probably has enough to keep battle styles rising. Dude, I, I think that's a good alt art. Uh, I, I wouldn't say like S tier, but I'll give it A tier. Like that was that was one set that I opened uh, my first battle styles back. I pulled that. I bought uh, like three three booster packs from um, Zap Comics and I opened it and it had the T tar in it. The centering was horrible. It got a nine, but still like. Uh, that was my chase, and it, because, it, dude, it's a cool card. Like, you can't tell me that's that's not a bad alt art. Uh, I would have it up there. It's definitely A tier. Yeah, but I think yeah. that can carry the set, man. I, I, like I said, I don't think Battle Styles is going to be, like, super crazy, but I think still at $100 a box is still a good buy. Are, are you making – are you, like, uh, speculating at all on the, the Scarlet Violet era for these these uh, illustration rares? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, everyone knows they're incredibly hard to grade. The print quality, especially, I mean, Temporal Force is a little better, but before that, too, it's like atrocious. I mean, every card you pull out of the pack is not gradable, and the pop reports are, are showing that. Are, I mean, are you, obviously, if a reprint comes and the reprint's got better quality, you're going to get screwed, like like the Magikarp is, but have you, have you been just trying to, like, grade any yourself or keep any, you know, hoping, like, they're going to, you know, start exploding? No, I, I, have, I have a binder specifically for those, and... Dude, I think they're gorgeous cards, all of them. Like, I have the Raichu, the Tyranitar. I actually want the Gasly. I don't want to open anymore because I open a decent amount. But I tried buying a Gasly the other day for 20 bucks. Like, that card's, that card's cool. I mean, they're very tough to grade. Like, Scarlet and Violet doesn't have the best QC. I see a lot of issues. So, if you can grade them in a 10, it's, it's, it's solid. Especially that Magikarp. I want that Magikarp in a 10. I never Yes, yeah, so I started... I've started to speculate a little bit and buy some when I can find them, like when they go low at auction, like, you know, the only, the only thing I'm like nervous about, like going too deep is reprints. Like if they reprint, let's say they reprint 151, right. And the quality is like great. And then all these Charmanders and, and uh, uh, War Turtles and Squirtles, Charmeleons, all, all the regular illustration rares with all the shiny fronts are all way easier to grade. They're They're going to get crushed. And so like, but if the quality is continues to be crap and they're just the, I mean, I'm looking at a lot of the pop reports and a lot of them have a negative, like not a negative, but a, a more nine to 10 ratio, which we haven't seen in a, with a lot of cards in recent times to where the tens are a lot harder to get than they used to be. And there's a lot of PSA 10 collectors. Let's face it. Like eventually, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna come to a head when sword and shield era starts to get, you know, collected and the prices get too high and people are moving on. There's not going to be enough to go around. I, I agree with that. I mean, I opened a lot of 151, and honestly, not many of them graded tens. <laughs> it was it's pretty tough. Like I have a master set, but the, I took all the cards that were like in the worst condition and put them in my master set. But it turned out like nine out of ten cards that I pulled that just wouldn't hit a PSA ten. So I think in the future, if they do do a reprint and those, that Charizard drops down low, the Blastoise drops low, I'll just buy them because they'll be cheap. But um, I don't know if the print quality is getting better because I still see issues on every set that I've opened so far. Like Temporal Forces, man, there was a box. Like I pulled out uh, the Bianca card, right? And dude, I'm telling you, it's like a PSA 7. That's how bad the edges were on this card. And there's no issues on the outside of the box, but I, I've never seen anything like this. Like it, it reminds me of Burning Shadows, how bad that uh, the winding was. Like yeah. I've even seen X, open XY boxes that look better than that last box I opened. It's scary a little bit. I don't like it. But yeah. I'm I telling you, that it's another similarity. Like, you can draw so many similarities with S Scarlet Violet. It's like XY had terrible print quality, the same as Scarlet Violet, you know? Yeah. But I, I do think, like, the 10s are, are plays. I do. There's a lot yeah. of potential with them. And I, I, honestly, if I'm being honest, I, I like seeing how the PSA 10s are lower than the PSA 9s. Because in Sword and Shield, the print quality was really good, and you don't really see that. The, the tens are always more than nines. So, uh, 
I, I think they they have a lot of potential. But dude, that Magic Carp is so sick. I've been calling that forever. I really that was my chase card. I opened a case and I couldn't pull it. I'm like, I'm not opening anymore. I I I, I honestly I didn't see this coming. I I did not see it just smoking the Iono like that. Oh, I, mean, I didn't see that coming. I knew it was going to be a, a sick card, but I I didn't know it was going to beat the Iono. But you know what helped it? Like that they've been doing a lot of Iono cards. They've been uh they're doing those uh milk cartons for the Iono. So that that might help it. Yeah, they're all, they're overdoing it for sure. Yeah, exactly. It's like they keep they, they're making a lot of money off it, so they're going to keep doing it just like they do with Charizard. So sometimes it'll make it drop a little bit. No, no, I hear, I hear you. Any uh, any topic you wanted to discuss? We we can take some questions from the chat in a minute, but any anything you wanted to hit on that I didn't? I'm dude. We've been talking so much, so it's tough. That I said that I said uh, we've been talking a lot lately, so it's gonna be uh, hard to go. I'm trying. Wait, let me let me ask you this. So, like, when it comes to selling, right? Like, you know, you, you let some stuff go to to get some stuff done in your house and stuff like that. But otherwise, I mean. When do you ever look to like let, let something go, like a box or a, or a slab? Like, is it is it just when you're looking to get something else? Is, do you ever like get to a certain price point or get to a certain point where you where you see it makes sense to sell? Like, how, how do you go about that? Or is everything just kind of hoarded? So, I mean, it's kind of hoarded because like I, I even said when oh when this hits a thousand dollars, like I'll let it go. And Cosmic hit a thousand dollars, and I'm I want more. So, I mean. Like I said, I'm just grateful to be where I am in life. I was able to get into the house and get to keep my sealed, so I'm very happy about that. But uh, I mean, I just I'm at the point where I have so many cases of like Fusion Strike, you know, all the sword and shield sets. So maybe when those hit a thousand a box, I'll just get rid of a couple of cases. I don't know, man. I I'm I'm just very lucky to be in a position where I don't have to do that right now. If you if you had to guess right now, how many booster boxes do you think you own? In total? Yeah. Oh, man. Dude. Ballpark it. Ballpark it. Um, ballpark it? It's way more than me. Dude, there's so many cases in there. Like, we have, like, cases, like... He, he's he's showing me pictures of his, like, closet and stuff. I mean, the cases, they're just stacked up. It's just... It's, it's like a mini Rudy... <laughs> It is kind of like a mini Rudy. I love Rudy. Dude, it's it's getting there, man. <laughs> yeah. No, it's kind of gotten crazy where like uh the amount of chilling rain I have is pretty absurd. But my doubt and the, the, keep this in mind. If you want to dabble right now, you know, I'll give you a little advice. Right now you can buy Paradox Rift, you know, at five five hundred a case, right? And I was doing that with Chilling Rain and Infusion Strike when they were at 480 and then they went to 500. And then when they hit 600, I bought a couple more. And then recently, I bought a, a couple more fusions at eight hundred. So my dollar cost average is sub a hundred dollars on those boxes because I like that's what I'm doing with every set. Like every new set that comes out, I don't buy a pallet of them. I buy like three cases, and I'll open one case with my daughters, and I'll keep two sealed. And I've, I've always done this, right? So yeah, I noticed that about you. Like you, you buy at the beginning, but you, you, you keep buying on the way up uh, to a certain extent. To a certain extent, exactly. Like um, at this point, I won't buy any. Last time I bought Evolving Skies, I bought one more case at twenty two hundred. No, I bought one more case at twenty two hundred and one at twenty four hundred, and those were the last ones. And then the other four, I spent six hundred dollars on. Right? I think it was six hundred, six six. I don't know. My numbers are all over the place. Six six six, and then twelve, and then it went over two, and then two again. So my dollar cost average on Evolving Skies, I have it written down somewhere, but it's still, it's low because I like to buy them in the beginning and I'll see what they do. And if I really like a set like Brilliant Stars, I loved Brilliant Stars. That Charizard was so much fun to chase. Like I bought a lot of Brilliant Stars because it was one of my favorite sets. I'm collecting what I love, right? Fusion Strike, I love that Gengar. Gengar is one of my favorite Pokemon. I bought a lot of that. Chilling Rain, dude. I, like I said, I just thought that set was a home run, but Evolving Skies overshadowed it, and everybody wanted, you know, Evolving Skies when Chilling was out. But I saw a lot of opportunities, and that's why I probably have the most Chilling Rain out of all my sets. I think Chilling Rain and Lost Origin I have the most. Yeah. Yeah, because Lost Origin is a great set too. Oh, it makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. Guys, anyone who's got any questions, I'm not going to go scroll through the entire chat. Um just leave your question again right now and I'll, I'll start watching now and we'll take them. But, uh, no, that, that's, that makes sense though. Do you, um, 
What about like all your black, I mean, your XY boxes and stuff like. I have cases. <laughs> all, 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 all that stuff is like, uh, I mean, you're not, you're not touching anything like that. You're not, you're not letting that go. You're holding that long term. Nah. Yeah, I, dude, because like the thing is like when I got into it, XY wasn't crazy. So I was opening a lot of XY, but like I, I did, I send you the picture. Like I, I was going through all my bulk the other day because someone wants to buy my bulk. They gave me a really good offer, but I was going through all of it and all the reverse hollows, all are sleeved. I sleeved everything, right? When you first get into it, you're sleeving everything. And I can't believe how much XY went through, how much sun and moon, but it was like, I, I came in a great spot where you were able to open these things where, you know, Roaring Skies was, I think it was like five or $6 a pack. Right. So it wasn't like crazy yet. So I was able to open all this stuff and really got to enjoy it. But yeah. as far as like the XY cases, Sun and Moon cases, like, dude, I have a, a decent amount of Unified Minds cases. So what about like when I come out there with a, what about when I come out there with a briefcase full of cash? Like how far does that get you though? <laughs> Dude, when you come here for Collecticon, you can see it, but I'm not selling it, bro. <laughs> not selling it. Not selling I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna have to do some, some bribery. If I didn't have to sell it for this house, then I'm good. I'm not selling it. Damn. Like God willing that I don't like have to sell it. Damn. I'll think. I'll think of something. I'll think of something. But you know how, how many people make fun of me? When my when my 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 brothers and my dad helped me move, right? And the cases, I was like, no, no, no. And he drops a case. Um, and I'm like, he's about to, he almost drops it. And I'm right there with him. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm like, dad, I'm like, this is an eight thousand dollar case. And he's like, what? And I'm like, it's a case of cosmic. And he has no idea what I'm saying. He's like, these are that expensive. I'm like, yeah. He had no idea, but like the thing is, people have no idea what this stuff is worth. But everyone thinks I'm insane for doing it. But at the end of the day, man, I love what I'm doing. This is so much fun. I have so much fun doing this. You can't tell me this isn't amazing. Like I'm just grateful to even be able to mess with this stuff. This is right. Awesome. Hey, where do you uh, where do you get your um, acrylic uh, protective cases from? Cassio wants to know. Oh, um, all right, so. A while, we're talking like maybe four years ago. They they had them on Amazon and they were really cheap on Amazon. They were like nine ninety nine in acrylic. And I remember I, I bought like ten of them, started putting my my steel stuff in it, and then I bought like twenty at a clip and didn't buy them for a while. And then they went up to like twenty five dollars, and now they're like thirty dollars. But I always went on Amazon and I would buy them on Amazon. But they just got two. Uh, they're the Ultra Pro ones are really expensive. I'm sure you could buy like the off brand ones for like fifteen to twenty dollars. But I like the Ultra Pro because even if they fall, like the magnet, uh, the magnetic on is really strong. Adam, uh, Adam thinks you're all in, brother. Do you have any other investments besides Pokemon? You sound like you are all in. You st are you struggling over there, man? <sighs> no, this thing. I'm getting used to this chair. I never had a gamer chair before, so it's like creaking the whole time. Um, um, I uh, let's see. Yeah, I have my 401k. I have a Putnam account. Uh, and then, I mean, those are pretty much my investments and then my Pokemon, but my 401k, I've had my 401k since I was like 22, 23. So I've had it for like 11 years now. Yeah. 401k is good, but, uh, never pull out. Even when it, it looks like it's bad, never pull out. It, it'll go back to normal. But yeah, I've had a Putnam account for, since I was like 21. And What's a Putnam account? So I, all right. So you have, um, What's it called? All right. So like a Putnam account is where you have like someone put all your stocks in, right? See, I inherited this when my real father passed away, right? So I never really messed with it, but I got a Putnam account and you have, correct me if I'm wrong, but they'll invest in a couple of different stocks, right? And I don't know what, what is he called? Not an advisor, not an accountant. Like a broker? Not a stock broker. Yeah, he's like a broker. Okay. So I have like four different accounts and he'll just invest in that stuff. Like I don't do anything. Like it was for my father, but God willing, I never touched that either. So it's been sitting there for since he passed away for like 12 years, never even had to do anything with it. But for where the, the money I mean, used to be, go ahead. No, I mean, it's like I, I always give you, I always like joke to you about it, but I mean, he he's got a really successful plumbing business too, guys. Like, oh, dude. I mean, I know. 
What it looks like all this. I mean, here's the thing. Like it, with anything in life, right? It's like, you know, you look at what one person has, then you look at what someone else has and then someone else has. And it's like, everyone's lives in different means, right? It's like, you know, just because someone has a lot of stuff, it doesn't mean they're like all in or they're like going too hard. You know, I mean, I'm sure I could show, you know, what I have to other people and they would think like, I'm all in and I'm, I'm like really living on the edge. It's just, it, everyone just kind of has different income levels and it's just, you know, you, you've decided to put a lot of your disposable income in Pokemon. Yeah. But so before anyone thinks like I have like a silver spoon or anything like that, like everything that I have, is like for my own my own accord like my own money no one's ever given me anything like i said i've never even touched that putnam account it's been there since the world trade center because i remember him telling me how bad it did right like i don't even mess with that so like this everything that i have in my life is because of myself like i've never had to even go into that it's like a joint with my grandfather and i but i've never had to touch it right like i don't even know that much about it because I, I don't even mess with it. Right. But I know that if there was ever an emergency, I'd be, I'd be okay. Maybe that's why I'm a little more riskier because maybe there is a safety net essentially, but I've never had to touch it. Yeah. No, I, I wasn't trying to make it seem like that. I mean, no, your, your yeah. business, you, 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 built it ground up. It's like, you, you yeah. know how everybody is. Oh, you got this money from somebody, you know? No, I mean, you, well, you started, well, you, you went to school to be a teacher yeah. And then decided to go into plumbing. You worked your way through that apprenticeship and then, you know, left and started your own company and built it from the ground up. Like, I mean, it's like literally like the American dream type stuff, you know? Yeah. Because there's um, money in plumbing. I'll tell you that. Jacob, appreciate you, man. I'm glad you stopped by for the videos every day. I'm, I'm trying to keep them coming every single day. Uh, yeah, you've been on fire with that lately. I mean, I've been, I've been trying to keep it going, you know, it's every day, video after video, you got to respect the hustle. It's man. every day, bro. Uh, I think ETBs aren't as good anymore. Apart from special loose sets from evolving skies. Yeah. What's your, uh, your take on ETBs? I'm so you can go back to like my earliest videos on my channel. Like when I first started and I talk about the ETBs going, being good. That was coming off the back of XY and Sun and Moon, where they actually were good investments. Pokemon did like a, a 360 or 360, 180, and uh, and changed things up. And it was kind of always accepted that back in XY and Sun and Moon, well, they won't reprint ETBs because they don't want to have to reprint the dice and the sleeves and the dividers and the boxes. It's much easier just to print like you know booster packs or sleeved packs or blister or, uh, booster boxes. But when Sword and Shield came around. They changed it up, right? The Voltage Darkness Blaze got massive reprints. They reprinted Shining Face. They they started reprinting all the ETBs and printing mass amounts of them. And they're like the main product gets sold at all the big you know retailers now and everything. And because of that, they just haven't been as sought after and haven't been as investable. And so that's why I've really been sticking to just booster boxes. What? How do you feel about all that? So I mean, ETBs are still good if you're going to rip because you can still buy an ETB of Lost Origin for what is it like? $39.99, right? I mean, you're only getting eight packs, but it's cheaper than getting a booster box. So, I mean, in, in the ripping area, yeah, DTBs are good, but uh, Evolving Skies, I think they just hit $100. Like, I have a case of Evolving Skies ETBs. I have, and like you said, the specialty sets, like, I stick with the specialty sets, but honestly, they just take up so much room that, like, I have a case of Brilliant Stars, but besides those, it's all specialty sets. I don't really do the ETBs unless it's Pokemon Center. Like, I have one of every Pokemon Center ETB case, if not more with certain sets. But, yeah, for regular ETBs, that's personally not my thing. But what's the craziest case you own? I don't want a Flash Fire case. I wish I did. I mean, craziest case? Do you have any XY cases? Yeah, I have XY cases, but I still think the Cosmic's better than them. What do you have in XY? Roaring Skies. Roaring Skies, Evolutions. Um, yeah, cosmic, Cosmic's better. I mean, I have like, I have six booster boxes of Ancient, but it's not in a sealed case. So, um, yeah, I have to give it the Cosmic Clips. It's probably my best case. Hey, Snowy just wants to say he loves you, man. I love you too, man. Uh, what else we got going on in here? What else do we got? If you see anything, we'll take it. Uh, okay, so MD Cars was setting it straight. Putnam is a brokerage firm. His Putnam account is just an investment account portfolio. Okay, okay. Thank you. Like I said, I inherited that from my dad. 
But if you want, yes, to Brett. This is this is his alias. Pokemon Whale is what he should go by. <laughs> oh man! All right, Matthew said no. Nomics is all about sealed, but I like singles and slabs as well. What would you recommend for percentage of collecting? I think I'm forty percent sealed, twenty percent singles, forty percent PSA slabs. Man, I don't even know if I've broken it down like that. Uh, let me Eight, think about it. What do you think? 70, 20, and 10. 70 sealed, 20 slabs, 10% raw. That's that's just what I have if, I, if I'm doing my math correctly. Yeah, and I'm like way – I mean, mine's like way off, right? Mine's probably like 90, 93, 90 to 90, like 3% sealed and then then some slabs i don't really do singles i uh any singles i have i usually just sell um it's really just slabs and uh mostly sealed though i i just here's the thing guys like i i, I do i do good with what i have like i, I joke about it all the time but like i'm, I'm not I'm like I'm, I'm just a normal dude from the midwest like i don't i don't got tons of money i don't make tons of money i mean i've had some good jobs and I, i've been able to put some some money away but it's like I, uh, I'm pretty conservative with what I invest in both in, you know, the stock market and in, uh, Pokemon. And I just feel like booster boxes are, are that, you know, more conservative investment. Like when things go crazy, you're going to see bigger spikes on slabs and singles. Um, but when things downturn, you're going to see much harder crashes on slabs and singles. Whereas like booster boxes, I showed a video on it. Like, you know, after the tag team and waifu crash, let you know, that's been going on all the sun and moon boxes are staying at their highs, right? They're not, they're not dropping off and they're still selling relatively uh, frequently. And so I want to be in those. I want to be in something that's always going to have less supply and it's always going to be, uh, you know, the, the demand can fall in sealed product. And you can still be okay because there's always less supply. Whereas singles and slabs, it's like, there's always going to be as many or more every single day. There's always going to be as many or more out there. And uh, that just, that scares me a little bit. Now I definitely play on them. I mean, I, I make some speculative plays, um, a lot of them are more short-term plays, but uh, that's kind of why I stick to mostly sealed. But if you've got some, if you want to speculate a little more, if you want to try to like hit those bigger gains, it's kind of like if you want to start playing some some single stocks and some crypto and are sick of just the mutual funds and S&P, slabs and singles can be your thing for sure. That's how I feel on it. I don't know. I mean, you know, you like I said, you talk to a lot more of the kind of the slab collectors than I do. Is that how they kind of feel about like the Watsi and the mid era slabs? Like, are, do they feel like those are like the stable, more uh, conservative plays that more than like even modern sealed? Well, not necessarily because a lot of them say their slabs are down, right? Like a lot of them are having issues with their slabs. They're like, even if I'm buying at 80%, I have to buy it less than 80% because they're fluctuating so much right now. Right. So say if they buy a slab at 80% and then there's a sole listing for like 70%. Then everyone's going to show him that comp now. And that's where he's having issues because they are fluctuating a lot. Like at least if you have a fusion strike box, it's like 200, 220, 205, where these slabs, especially the bigger slabs, say if you have a $5,000 card and then it sells for, you know, 3,200 and then there's a sale for 45, where are you going to comp it at? You know, then it's going to be a back and forth. So slab, slabs are, when you're talking about bigger slabs, it's tough with those lower pops because then you're not having that many sell, right? So you're not going to see a consistent sale on those. So a lot of my buddies deal with that, those kind of cards. So it's, it's tough, but a lot of my one buddy loves uh, modern, right? Because he said it's so liquid. Like he has no problem selling the alt arts. It's liquid, liquid, liquid. And he's having even trouble buying them at 80% now. Now he's got to spend, you know, 15 grand at 85% to get these things, but he's willing because he's selling them instantly. Yeah. And you know, like that's one of my reasons why I don't like to even mess with the vintage market for selling is a lot of those guys are so particular. I've never, when, I mean, when I started selling off a lot of my first edition base hollows and stuff, I've never had so many people ask me for, for more pictures and close ups of the corners. And I'm like, guys, it's in a PSA nine case. Like it's a PSA nine. But like, they're so worried about every little thing. Like, is there a swirl? Is there this on the, you know? And it's just like, I've never had anyone ask me that modern slabs. Like it's a nine, they buy it. It's a 10, they buy it. They're not worried if it's a strong nine or a weak nine, strong 10, weak 10, this, that. It's just like, that's one of the, the things. It's like, why that market's so volatile. It's like, okay, well, 
that one sold for 3,500, but this one sold for 42. Well, yeah, that one at 42 is a lot stronger nine than that, that weaker nine at 35. It's like, where does it end? You know, it's, it's so impossible. Like you, you, you grade your cards, right? To have a third party authenticate it and a third party give a number to it. So it's easier to like value and it's easier to like transact. But now that's not even working because no one can agree on the third party that gave it the, the value. So it's oh, like, it's almost know. like transacting a raw single again. It's, yeah, it's, it's wild. Like a conundrum, bro, because my one buddy's like, I want PSA nine new search with swirls, right? <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, the new search are nicer than the PSA tens old search. And it's like, it, it's just. And he's not, and he's not wrong. I mean, yeah. a, lot, a lot of the time. No, he's not wrong. It just it gets so complicated now because like I had the the Lugia from um what the hell is it? Call Legends and a 10. And dude, if that was graded today, that would get a PSA 7 or a PSA 8, right? So it it is it's tough with certain cards, man. Like now honestly, if I buy a 10 right if this is what I'm doing with these alt arts, if I'm getting a 10, the centering has to be perfect on it for these alt arts. Like I don't want the ones that are like this. So I, I, it's, we just overcomplicate everything as collectors, you know? I remember back in the day when I was, so this was like in 2020, 2021 time when I was selling off my collection and I was selling off a Lapras. Um, it was when I graded myself and I thought, I didn't think in any way in, in hell it would get a 10, but it came back a 10, uh, first edition Lapras from Fossil and it came back a 10 and it was all, when I say it was off center, it was off center. And, uh, of course I knew it when I listed, I had people messaging me like, Bro, there's no way this should be a 10. Like, and you're pricing it like it's a 10. Like, I'll, I'll offer you this much. I'm like, hey, man, I'm not a grader. PSA is sorry. Like, and I had like a couple of people messaging me, like, angry at me for it. Like, like you shouldn't be charging what a full 10 would cost. I'm like, it is a full 10. Do you not see the number there? <laughs> you know? Oh, it's this hobby's wild. Hey, this is for you, I believe. Hey, Stash. <laughs> When are you picking up this 151? About to open it all. <laughs> Dude, I've been picking it up all the time. Costco had a nice little thing. I didn't go too crazy, but I bought some collection. Yeah, you sent me that, all those boxes. Yeah. I mean, 151, I've been secretly just going all in on 151 because that's what I grew up with. I love it. I think it's a no-brainer. I, I said this to my one buddy. I said, Dude, imagine if Evolutions had a collector box, like the ones that we picked up from Costco. I said it would be insane, right? And like that's what I compare 151 to is evolutions, but it's like you have the new version of those cards. So I, I think 151 is a no-brainer. Even though like people are like, I'm not a fan of ETBs, like I hate ETBs, but it's still like, dude, I think that's a great set. No matter how much they print it. Uh, I had I, I know so many people that came back into the hobby because of 151. It's just a no-brainer. And when, when the Japanese does the the reprint. I'm not, I only have a couple of Japanese boosters because I always thought they were going to do, do the reprint and uh, I'm going to go all, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to go all in on those. It, depending if they hit, if they hit a thousand a case, I'm going to see whatever I have and I'm going to get it. Dude, they're like, hitting a thousand. I, I already told you this on the phone. They're gonna These are going, thousand. sub. they're going sub a hundred. Dude, if they go, I mean, they retail $40, so they should, but they're going if, sub a hundred for sure. I just don't know how big the print run's gonna be, right? Like, uh, what if it's a small print run and then they're they're one forty a box, right? Like, you might be able to get them cheaper right now. So I, I always go back and forth with that yeah. because, you, you, like, I don't want to scare anyone, but there's always a chance that the reprint's small. But I mean, with Vstar Universe, they did a pretty big reprint, so that's something you can try to compare it to. Or Vmax Climax had a decent print, so I I try to uh um. Poke Palmer, do you diversify in other TCGs or is it only Pokemon? Well, there is this one TCG here heard about from some idiot online. <laughs> oh, man. I got, a, I got a couple of these guys. What idiot told you to buy that? <laughs> I got a couple of them. There's some more. I got, I have, uh, I try to do, um, I was like, oh, I'll do two of every set. And like, I ended up getting a case of OP05 for, I was only at like $100 a box. Um, but then when they hit like 220, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep one of every box because I've opened. I pulled the Zoro. I actually have uh, – I have to send this to uh, PSA. Oh, no, BGS. I sent everything to PSA yesterday, but I'm going to send that to 
BGS. Yeah, I've heard like the One Piece. There's there's such good condition. You gotta get like black labels with them. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. But One Piece is fun. I'm not gonna say you're lie. I enjoy opening One Piece. You know, I like anime. I like Dragon Ball. I like One Piece. It, it's fun. I mean, I'm just. It's not fun for me when a set comes out and it's two hundred dollars a box right off the rip. Like and you were you were into what like uh like action. Fit. What were you into before this? Like uh hot toys. I have a lot of hot toys. They're all around this room. Yeah, hot toys. I love hot toys. Okay. Yeah. And you did well on those too, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, the market's down on those a lot lately. Very down. So I haven't been going as like crazy in the hot toys. Like, dude, I, I set up all the ones I wanted to keep. I, I had no idea how many I had because I, I didn't unbox them when I was at the other place because I knew I was moving. And uh, when I got them all, dude, there was like 100 hot toys, right? Not even kidding. Maybe more. So I tried. I have like 20 that I want to sell out of the 20 and I put like the cheapest on the market, right? Cheaper than eBay, anyone's listing. And I only sold two out of 20. That's how bad the market is. Yikes. Yeah. So hot toys, not doing so hot, but one piece, it's fun. It would be nice if I could buy a booster box at release for retail, right? Or if I could even get a case for retail, yeah. but I, I just don't reckon anyone, I recommend anyone to go into it for a 220 a box right off the bat. Like that's not fun. Yeah. When I, when I started talking about it, no one, like at least no one that I, I knew or had followed or no one was talking about it. Right. It was, it was new and it made sense because like romance Dawn was in like the low one hundreds. And then, you know, all the boxes, like they came out like low one hundreds, if not under a hundred, and it was, it made sense, right? I mean, I saw a lot of popularity, my card shop and other, another card shop I talked to, they were telling me how many players they were getting. I'm like, this is, this is a real deal and the IP strong, but now it's like, okay, Bandai, you gotta give us like a, a big print run on one of these. Cause it needs a stress test. Like one piece needs to be stress tested with a large print run. Like everyone's looking at it and, and thinking like, oh, this is like better than Pokemon. It's like, guys, if you took the one piece print run, and, and made a set at Pokemon with that same print run, guys, these sets would be $500. Like, it's, yeah, yeah. They're just, they're just giving such a short amount of supply to the market where the demand's so high. That's why the prices are going so high. It's not like, oh, One Piece is more popular than Pokemon. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I give perspective. Like my, uh, my LGS, they usually get like 20 cases of Pokemon for every set. And with One Piece, they're getting two to three cases, right? And they have a line out the door and they're sold out in the first hour. So, I mean, we have to see, I don't know if they put out 20 cases, what would happen? Like, I, I don't know. It's just, it's not, not fun. Well, I mean, we, saw what, we saw what would happen like back during the boom with, with Pokemon. Like you saw vivid voltage boxes going oh to 200. Gosh, 200 and something. Yeah. That was That's what happens when there's not enough supply to meet the demand. Like it's just, it's not, it's not like, just one piece it's any tcg that gets popular that doesn't have a print run you know s substantial enough to meet the demand that's just how it is right now and i don't want to be left holding the bags when they do get enough prints and again maybe it doesn't come like and that, that's another thing let's talk about that it's okay to be to miss in my opinion it's okay to miss things than it is to, i'd rather miss things and get caught in them right like I'd rather not buy a two hundred dollars box and have more print runs just never come, and it goes to three, four, five hundred, then buy a bunch of two hundred, have it get massive printed, fall down to ninety dollars a box, and then take four years to get back to two hundred. Like, I'd rather be in the position A than position B in that point. I just don't want to be in that position at all, where I have to pay that much when a first set comes out. No. Nah. Would you guys, what does it say? Would you guys have sold some of your position if you were holding X, Y, and Sun and Moon cases? He, Alex he is holding. <laughs> well, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you're, you're still holding. Oh, yeah, I'm still holding. Um, yeah, I sold. I sold everything, guys. Uh, it, just, it just made sense to me at the time. I mean, honestly, it was, the, it was the right decision. Looking back, like, I want everything, but it was still the right decision on, like, what the money did what I did with the money, like since then, like other, like stock market investments, like it made sense, but no, it sucks that it's gone too, you know? Yeah. What if you could trade, at, trade Evolving Skies Booster Boxes a crypto? They could back the crypto by holding a bunch of boxes, like how USDC backs their crypto by holding dollars. I, I don't, I don't do, do the crypto much. I, I got, I tried Dogecoin cause my buddy was all about it and like it was doing really good. And you see, I like the hold. I held and it didn't end up well. 
Yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't mess with crypto a ton any either. Um, do you think after ratings boxes will be two hundred by the end of the year? I think they'll be two hundred by the end of the summer. Like easy. I, I think they're going to be. I think that's that's an underrated set. I think the print run is going to play a part of that. I think uh, Astral Radiance wasn't printed as they never had their reprint. Astral Radiance, uh, from my knowledge, Astral Radiance never had their reprint. Right, Brilliant Stars did, Lost Origin did, About My Skies. All of them had their reprints, even Silver Tempest. But Astral, I think, yeah, I think it'll be a two hundred dollar box sooner, sooner. Is is Pokemon Plumber on the team of double boxing cases? Oh man, dude, my Discord got heated one night. I of, knew like, double box cases, dude. There's like two camps, and, and dude, I still for the life of me, I can't double figure box out. Cases. Dude, there's like a whole camp of people in my Discord that were against it, and I'm like, okay, I'm like, dude, do no. you guys know you're in a collectibles market? Bro, because like Pokemon Center, like that's the risk with Pokemon Center because they just send it right in a in a in a booster box case, right? And it drives me insane. You want to see what happens when you, you when you don't double box? I'll show you. Dude, it was it was wild one night. I, I can't figure out for the life of me. It's like these are collectibles, like, and then people. I mean, you know, so the side the side of the people who don't believe in double boxing, right, is. Well, it's a cardboard box that's protecting another cardboard box that has packs protecting the cards. It's like, dude, not everyone just collects the cards. Look at that, dude. The whole yeah. top because they didn't double box it. Look, this is a case of lost origin. I don't want to show my address on it, but. Yeah. And so what will happen is if you ever open that, odds are those boxes are damaged. And now the people who collect sealed product have damaged boxes, which are going to go for less in the market. But but the, the people who don't double box, their their method is. Well, I'm just trying to move this stuff as fast as possible. I'm going to slap the label right on it. I'm going to send it through the mail. It's like, dude, it costs like another dollar in cardboard. You don't even have to put packing material. Just wrap some cardboard around it so that then slap a label on that so the label is not directly on the box where, yeah, you can heat it up and try to peel it off. Like, But it's just like, dude, the the amount of, of like the ratio of money that would cost a double box like, compared to how much you're selling cases for it's so non-existent that I, I don't, I don't understand the camp of not double boxing. Not according to my friend. <laughs> he double boxed <laughs> and paid like $70 in shipping. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> I felt dude. Okay. So, so listen, a buddy of his was trying to move a case of chilling rain and we made a deal for it. And he shipped it and he like he he packaged it in too big of a box and so it, it charged him like seventy dollars at the post office. And dude, I felt so bad because I'm like, dude, if you would have just called, I could have told you how to package it. Like it should only cost you like twenty. Like and so I told him, like, hey man, whenever you're looking to buy something, if I got it, I'll give you I'll hook you up. Like, I'm sorry you had to go through this, but it's like, man, that was brutal. That was brutal. It's just so important to double box your cases. Yeah. And I, here's the thing, it's like I don't understand why uh, people are like against how other people collect in the hobby, right? Like that was one of the big things in the discord. Like everyone was like, I'm not going to put another piece of cardboard over a, over a cardboard box, over boxes that are, that are already wrapped in plastic again, in cardboard in packs that wrap the cards. It's like, dude, that's, that's irrelevant, right? Like not everyone collects the cards. Like the box itself is collectible. The if the case is damaged, the boxes inside the case are most likely damaged. <laughs> Yeah, like, and ask that person, would you rather have a sealed box of unbroken bonds that's new and mint or one with a nice dent in it? You see it on the market. Like, it's not just me or you. You can literally go to the open market. You can look at, at, at w the boxes or cases that sell for less. And sure enough, if you look at them most all the time, there's something wrong with them. There's a, a dent in the box. There's a rip in the plastic. The case is, uh, issues with it. There's a big shipping label. Oh, here's the best one. When they put the label directly over the product label where you can't even see what's in the set anymore. You know what I'm talking about? They put the shipping label over the case label. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, it's, it's, it's wild, you know, Pokemon center does all of those things. Isn't it funny? Pokemon center is the worst culprit of them all. Oh, the worst. <laughs> you know, you give me an option to double box. I would pay the extra $20. So, you know, I always pay a little extra if I find a minty box or case over a destroyed one. Always. Exactly. I mean, if, if someone has a, a box, right, and they're asking price makes sense and it's mint, right, I won't even haggle with them if the box is mint. Like all these boxes back here, 
right? Or men. Like I opened a box, a case of uh, Chilling Rain and dude, half of them had that loose, loose packaging on them. So like, dude, I'd rather have the mint one. That's me, but I'm a sealed collector. Now, nah, Mace, will you ever post a video of your sealed booster box collection? I got, I got to keep some things to the imagination, man. You have to, right? You got to. Hey, I have a question for you, man. So, I mean, obviously you still, I know you had to get rid of them or you didn't have to, but you decided to get rid of those for, you know, do stuff for the house. But you're looking at the market the way it is right now and like, you know, what you still like to collect, like, are there any of those older slabs that you think are, are good buys that you might start moving in again based on what they're currently at or what you currently see happening? Um, I really want to get my, uh, my crystal Zard back, right? That one like crushed me to sell. I, I, I missed that. I mean, the Lugia dropped a little bit again. Like those are two cards I definitely want, but right now you're going to think I'm insane, but I'm grabbing all the alt arts that I got rid of. <laughs> right like modern stuff like you I'm, think you're insane i'm doing the same thing dude yeah i i think uh i really re like dude i sold the machamp from astral radiance at like 100 bucks it's hitting 200 now i sold the dragonite v at like 125 that's 200 now all of them have gone up but they're like dude they're so beautiful they're so sick like i want the latios latias uh Again, like that's another card I want. That might be like my my next purchase is going to be Latios and Latias. If I can get it for wow. like 16, 17 right now. Yeah, I mean, like like I said, now I can really get back into it now that I'm pretty much done with the house. Yeah, it's like, here's, okay, so hear me out on this. You can kind of give me your perspective. But so I started buying the alt arts a few months ago. And unfortunately, I'm, I also had a lot of people come to me with like collections of sealed and you know, Lost Origin, Brilliant Stars, uh, Astral Radiance, uh, you know, all this stuff was happening. And so I, a lot of my money was going towards sealed, right? And I was still picking alt darts up, but yeah. time got away from me. And now like I'm I'm trying to complete some of the, my alt art set and uh, I don't want to be paying some of these prices. It's really hard now to, can, to finish it out because like even up to the last couple of weeks, it hasn't been terrible. In these last few weeks, it's just, it's gotten out of hand where I'm like, now I'm starting to kind of pump the brakes a little bit. I'm trying to like grade myself if I do buy them, but so, but here, here's what I, my quick question is, and I, I get a lot of people reach out to me or, or have, discuss this, and this is kind of my answer to it. Everyone talks about these are going to come down, right? And you know, if you like, if you look at it, Alex, all the anytime a runoff like this happens, things come down. So here's my explanation: you don't know where the top is. So of course, things are going to give some of the gains back when they reach the top. But let's just this is hypothetical. Let's hypothetically say Moonbrion reaches fifteen hundred dollars, okay? If it repeat, and then it falls thirty percent, thirty has a thirty percent retrace, which we've seen a lot of the tag team cards. Now they've started to stabilize at about thirty percent. Yeah, that's three hundred. That's what three four or uh, four hundred fifty dollars. So now it's going to stabilize around ten fifty. What if it only drops twenty twenty five percent? It stabilizes around what it's at now, and so like that's a you're, good. Point. You're risking the fact that, like, you know, you're thinking this big drop's coming. A big drop could come. What if by the time these run up, the drop isn't even as substantial as what you could buy in, like, right now or what you could have bought in a week or two ago? Like, people always, you know, they always underestimate the rise and they always overestimate the fall, I felt in this hobby, right? Because everyone likes to be negative, right? They, they don't think things can go up as much as they can. And they always think they're, they, they they're going to come down more than they actually are. And so that's, like, my stance on it. Like, of course, there's going to be a retrace. The question is, how much is that retrace going to be per card? And where does that retrace start from? Is it now? Is it in a month when these things are 20 or 30% higher? I don't know. Like, what do you think? Well, I can give you an example. Like uh, with the Magic Carp Whale Lord from Team Up, right? I, I graded that myself. And, uh, you know, it went from 200 to like 400 to 700 to $1,100 at one point, right? And then it retraced to about seven, 600, right? So, that went from a $200 card and it retraced and stayed around anywhere from like six to 700. Right. But it did hit that thousand dollar point, but still it was $200. And now you're, you're $500 more. Right. And you could have been at, and, and there, you could have been at the four or $500 mark saying, this is all going to come down and retrace and crash. You need to sell now. Yep. And the Gengar, the Gengar Mimikyu did the same thing. That was like 300, 400. And that one went up to 1200 and then it, I think it dropped back down to like six, 700, did the same exact thing, but now it's sitting at, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty sure it's at 700 right now. 
So it's doing the same thing. It, it's so, I mean, who says that Machamp? I maybe, maybe their, their defense is the populations on them, but maybe that Machamp can go up to 400 and then settle down around 275, right? Or 250. I mean, they're not printing any more of it. So, you, I, I mean, you have so many people that love these cards, and that's the same thing with the pops. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that Dragonite won't be 200 anymore. Maybe it'll go up to 400. I, it's just, it's tough with slabs, man. I think they're going to keep going up. I think they're going to drop. It always happens. They'll drop and then they'll stabilize. But you just don't know what the highs are going to be or the lows are going to be. It, it, it's, that one is really hard to speculate on. But you see it all the time with the ponchos. That was my first big break. They quadrupled in price, right? And I sold them at the high. And now, they I mean, they're coming back down a good amount. But they're not at the price of one when I sold them, you know? No, and, like, the other thing is, like, the scarcity factor. You know, everyone always talks about how, like, we talk about it already. There's so much of all this stuff, right? And the pop reports are just too high. And... Oh yeah. And the other thing people talk about is everyone's just an investor. Now everyone's investing, everyone's speculating. No one actually collects. No one likes the cards. Like everyone hears this rhetoric. It's not just me and you. It's everyone's, you hear this all around the hobby. Mm -hmm. I find it hard to believe when the, how these alt arts and all these cards and all these boxes, all these spikes, why, why do we continue to see the scarcity? Why is there continually less and less on the market every single day? Why is there less than 50 Umbreon uh, VMAX on the market when there's 10,000 plus available out there? Why aren't people taking their profits any step of the way? Like, why is it constantly less and less and the price is always higher, higher, right? Even on like the boxes, even the boxes are up and down. Like we're not seeing influxes of supply. We're not seeing people realizing their gains. And so they have to tell you something like maybe these things are being held. Yeah. I mean, it can go a couple of ways, right? Like one, they're being held because people love the way the card looks, right? Like you talk to anyone, they love the Moonbrion, right? So one, they're holding the card. And then two, you also have the people that bought the card at that high price. So why would they sell it for at the high price right now? Same with the booster boxes. They they got in at Fusion Strike at two hundred dollars a box. So why would they sell it for two twenty? Right. Same with Chilling Rain. But I I think with a lot of these cards, especially the slabs, I think people love these. Dude, they're art pieces, right? Like this is a really nice art piece. That Moon Brown's beautiful. That Ray V is beautiful. I love the Ray V. I think that one's sick. The, the Tina is beautiful. I mean, they are art pieces. Like, dude, I, I sold them. I regretted it. And now that I can buy them again, I'm buying. That's the first thing I'm doing is I'm buying alt arts, right? When I collected all the crystals, I collected all the ponchos. I collected all the XY. I collected all the sun and moon. The Watsi, you know, first editions, not tens, but uh, first, dude, I've collected Sky Ridge, everything. And the first thing when I can start spending money is I'm buying all the alt arts. Like this just came in today, right? Like, oh, here, I'll give you one more example. I sold all my cards, right? Everything. And I kept two cards out of everything. I had the Skyridge, Gengar, everything. These are the two cards that I kept. Is that insane? Two modern no. alt arts I kept. And, I and see, this, this is the thing. Like people... And this is the other thing that like used to, I don't hear it as much anymore, but it used to get preached, especially when I used to be in debates, you know, back in the day, um, people would always say like, well, it's because people can't afford the vintage or mirror stuff. That's why they don't collect it. It's like, I know you, I mean, I, I can afford a lot of it. I know you can afford pretty much all of it. It's like, it has nothing, it has nothing to do with the being able to afford it. It has nothing to do with like not growing up. Me and you both grew up in that time. Like it's just, they look better. They're better to collect. I mean, it's just, People like them. They, they genuinely like these modern cards. Yeah, I mean, dude, modern. I, I, dude, old Pokemon good, modern Pokemon good. That's how I see it. I love both of them. But, I, I mean, these arts are just so awesome. Well, and think about this. Like, you know, especially, like, I remember, like, being a kid, and you probably, you, you can tell me what you think. Like, remember you go to, like, some of your parents' friends' house, or even, like, your friends' houses, and their parents would have, like, you know, maybe they have artwork on the walls or maybe they'd have like their dad would have like some sports memorabilia or like, like people have always had, like they've always spent money on art and decorations for their house. Always like always. hundreds, thousands of dollars at pretty much every house in America. You walk in, they've got something in there. This is nothing new. Like buying, buying these things, right? This is nothing new. It's just our generation. It's based around these TCGs and collectibles. And it's less about putting a, you know, big $5,000 piece of artwork on the wall 
or having, you know, a piece of sports memorabilia or having, you know, some kind of heirloom or World War II stuff or like this is our generation's thing. Yeah, this this is my my artwork right here. That's my artwork on the wall. There it is. Right. But no, it's a good point. It's a great point. There's nothing different. It's just different things that you love. It's the best way to put it, man. It's just I feel like everyone overcomplicates everything. It's simple. Dude, this is this is probably the most overcomplicated hobby that is, is out there. I feel like I I always wonder. I always like kind of want to dive into something different and see if every other community is like. Uh, no, dude, the action figure market is a thousand times worse than the Pokemon market. Is it really, dude? Is that, dude, uh, when I collected the Dragon Ball SH fig arts, bro, it was drama scams like more scamming than you see like here. Like Hot Toys has a good market. Comics had a lot of drama. But like Pokemon it has a little bit of everything, but I, I've, I've, dude, I've also met some of my best friends in the Pokemon hobby. You know, uh, I don't know. It's just everywhere you go, no matter what, you're going to have your ups, downs. It's everywhere. But the action figure market, I feel like was one of the most crazy markets that I wanted nothing to do with anymore. Dang. Question for you both. Uh, you guys are into buying sealed booster boxes. Are you guys at all worried that more and more people are hoarding sealed? I don't care. Let me, I, I'll, I'll say this. Just remember from anyone you hear, including me and including us, it's the internet. Every discord you're in, every Instagram post you see, every chat and comment section you see. All As right. The team up. Believe half of what, believe like nothing of what you hear here and half of what you see, because sometimes pictures of people shown, maybe not theirs. Maybe they're gone here today, gone tomorrow. They're flipping it. The amount of people say they own stuff or say they're buying stuff or all this stuff. Half of it's not true. Like not as many people, one, have as much as they say they do Two, hold it long enough. And, you know, it, everything's, it's just, it's a lot of social media, a lot of online. It's just, it's made up BS. Like if, if there were truly, everyone was doing this and everyone had thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in this stuff. Why is no one ever selling it? Why is the market never dumping on all X Y evolutions or you know Burning Shadow, Shining Legends, like Hidden Fates? Like, why aren't all these sets? Or why isn't Evolving Skies crumbling to zero? If there's so much Evolving Skies out there when it when it goes from hundred dollars to seven hundred dollars a box, why are people not taking their profits in mass? Why is why is it still becoming more and more scarce? Like at what point do they dump? Is it just a constant pump? Is there you know, and so I, I think you just have to you have to kind of step away and realize, Hey, this is the internet. Everything's embellished on the internet. People like to get on comment sections or discords and say ridiculous things. It's, it's not as happening as, as widespread as you think. Dude, I, there's no way because even me, like I'm being honest, like sometimes when I keep like these last two cases, all storage, I'm like, Oh, should I be buying more cases? Like I, even sometimes I feel like, you know, we're spending $1,800 on two cases. So it's like all these people are like, oh, I'm buying this, I'm buying that. It's like, are you really though? Like, it's just, I don't know, man. Then why well, you know the, great, hey, the greatest part about it is, is you'll have this, a lot of times the same people, they'll talk about how, you know, the average like person can't save a thousand dollars their savings account or like a lot of people in this community are, are like broke or living on credit cards. But at the same time, it's like, everyone's doing this. You can't have it both ways. Does, does, does no one have money or does everyone have thousands of dollars to put into sealed product and not touch it? Yeah. It just, I don't know, man. It just doesn't make sense. Right. It, it's just like, all right, then all these people that bought chilling rain at $80. Why aren't you taking your two, your, your $120 gain when you have a hundred boxes, right? Go make a quick 12 grand. It, 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 I don't understand it. Like, are they, because logically, right? If they're an investment an investor, then once they hit 120%, right? They're dumping it all. Why don't I see all the boxes getting sold right now? It's just, dude, I just hear so much shit talking. I don't well, know. it's like here. First of all, like you know, me and you both know people that they, they don't. They're not on social media. They don't have Pokemon Instagrams. They don't. Uh, they don't conversate on Discords, but they they collect in the background, right? Or invest. And then you see like PokeRev in the big channels. You see they get hundreds of thousands of millions of views. They have thousands and thousands of people in their lives, right? But then you come to like these investing channels, and like there's over 200 people in here, which is great. I appreciate all you guys being here, which is crazy. Love you all. There's like over 200 people in here. There's, you know, like nine, eight or 9,000 subscribers, whatever. Like, you know, there's some bigger market channels, but 
this is such a small fraction of just the people that are on YouTube and then the people that are broad in the Pokemon community, then it's worldwide. People that don't even speak English. It's like when you think about how small this little community is and it, it makes it seem a lot bigger because you're, you're talking to a bunch of people in, in a really small room. They're all doing the same thing. But it's like when you look outside, it's like you talk to a regular person. You're, you're investing in Pokemon. Are you crazy? What do you mean? I try to get my customers to invest in Pokemon. He's like, oh, I'm selling uh, his uh, rental property. I was like, dude, put it in the Pokemon. And he thinks I'm insane, you know? But you know what a lot of people forget? Like, dude, you have so many streamers now, right? There is whatnot. There's Drip. There's TikTok. Bro, they are ripping thousands of boxes every – in a 24-hour period. I'm not even kidding. Probably a 1,000 boxes or more a day, right? Rip, 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 nonstop. So, dude, these streamers are, should be our best friends because they're opening it all. Well, here let's let's take let's do some math, right? So, we we can all agree that alt art, especially Moon Browns, at least like over five hundred packs on average to open, right? <laughs> Could be more. So five to six hundred packs to open one. There's over ten thousand and tens. There's more graded. There's more raw out there. How many packs did it take? To open 10, 11, 12, 15,000 Moombrians. Just, just do that, Matt. It's wild. I mean, it is wild, guys. Like, when you start doing the numbers and you start thinking about how many packs it would take to open that many alt arts, when you've watched Cold Trainer Ryan now, you know how hard that Blaziken is to pull. Then you look at the pop report, you say, how is there that over, many thousand? Over six million packs. Six million packs. Six million packs. To open that many cards. To open it's, that many cards. Oh, and so that's how much of this stuff's getting opened. Like who knows how much they printed, but there's 6 million packs less than they printed. <laughs> it's just crazy. If you were to put that in the booster boxes, that'd be 168,055 booster boxes. Rudy, Rudy couldn't even supply that. But like the thing is like, uh, I know, I know a couple of guys like my buddy, uh, my buddy Colson moonlight TCG. He, uh, he went very heavy in Lost Origins, right? And I think if you have, right, let's say, let me do the math real quick. So say if he has 180 boxes of Lost Origin, right? Like I remember when, uh, this isn't too long ago, Faith Clyde came back onto the market, right? So I guess they found him or whatever. And Faith Clyde was about uh, $300 a box. Dude, I wish I bought more. I only bought two of them. They sold out on eBay, right? And I, I, you know how they have like the quantities and they show like oh, last sold, almost sold out. Dude, yeah. this guy had to have like 200 Fates Clyde's box and they sold out like that, right? Like not even a 24 hour period, gone. So in the grand scheme of things, 180, right? To you have a million collectors. What's 180 boxes? If, so, if one person's really going to dump 180 booster boxes, dude, it's not going to do anything. Nothing. Just Grand go scheme. look at. I mean, just go look at the Moonbrion. Like everyone just throw a Moonbrion at auction, and every auction's ending at eleven, twelve hundred dollars. Everyone, of everyone. Them. I mean, and there's been hundreds and hundreds in the past month. Like the money just flows. I just think we're in a good position, man. I mean, I, who knows what the what the future is going to hold? But I mean, it's just a generational thing. Like like what you said. Like all these people have art on their walls, right? But for us, right? For I have I have two daughters and I have a son on the way, right? But they're gonna grow up with Pokemon, just like I grew up with Pokemon. Uh, my parents didn't teach me about art. Like I, I like Vincent Van Gogh, right? But they didn't teach me about art. And now I'm teaching my kids this. So, so what about when they get older? That's why I just think Pokemon's a lot more exciting, and you're always gonna have that growth, especially with the sports cards. It's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I just look at like every like, and obviously, like as you like get up more in social economic classes, like it becomes higher and higher. But it's like I just know like every I just remember like every single parent or like they'd always have something, right? Some kind of thing they held dear. Like they have sports memorabilia. They got like World War II stuff. They got Civil War stuff. They got you know antiques. They got you know sports. Cards. Like everyone like ha has money that they'd spend that they keep and collect, and and it's like. Us, I mean, it's the same exact thing. And it's like for people to think all oh, this is going to crash, it's like, okay, well, here's the thing. People don't just stop spending money. Where's that money going to go, right? It's, it, it goes somewhere. Like unless no one's got any disposable income, America goes to zero and we're all just struggling to get by eating soup and bread. It's like people are going to spend their disposable income somewhere. 
what is going to make people stop spending money on the hobby they love? Now, obviously you could lose a job coming to like divorce, like kids. There's, there's reasons I'm saying in masses, like the, the majority of people, what is going to, what kind of tragic event is going to stop them from buying the things they love for the rest of their life? <laughs> Unless there's like a war. That's the only thing, you know? And, and even then, like, that's the other thing I always talk about. People are always like talking about this doomsday stuff. Like guys, I, I didn't live in world war two, but like we both lived through like nine 11, like when wars happen, when like, I mean, even like right now, Ukraine, Russia, do you think everyone in Russia is, and everyone in Israel is, no one goes about life. Everyone's just like living in war. Dude, the majority of people still go about their everyday lives. Like people are still making the food, delivering the food, making the products. They're going to work every day. Like the soldiers are fighting. And then if you're in a war zone, like, yeah, that, that life is disrupted. The rest of the entire country, life, the, it's not like the whole world in every state, everything gets disrupted. If things go to war, like life still goes on. Everyone still makes a living. They still pay their bills. Like unless it just comes to everything's mass chaos, nuclear war, we're all living in caves. Yeah. Life will go on guys. Hey, if that happens, I'm going to open a lot of Pokemon product. I'll tell you that. <laughs> in your cave? <laughs> in my cave. Okay. I just think people like lose sight of that. Like it's, it's fun to like, you know, it's fun to get into the, the conspiracy theories and look at the, watch the TikToks and go down the road of like, what if we were talking about it? Remember we, we, we were talking about not doing the stream today. We're like, dude, what about the eclipse though? Yeah. But it's just like, it's fun to go down those roads, but like at the end you have to like get realistic and be like, okay, what if America goes to war? It's like, does that mean everyone just stops working and like no one makes money and no one buys a single thing? It's just all just like, I mean, guys get real. Come on, get real. Yeah, it's only a doomsday, but no, I, I I think this is, I mean, it's the it's the biggest IP in in the whole world. Yeah. All right, plumber, I, I'm gonna ask you the same question that I asked Alex. Do we see Valve Guys booster boxes hitting 1K or Moonbrion reaching Latias Latios price range? So I guess we're saying like Evolving Skies 1K or Moonbrion hitting 1600. Um, uh, Evolving Skies hitting 1K. Okay. Quick answer there. You're pretty confident. Um, uh, yeah, I think we're going to go into a little bit of a, a stagnation period with Evolving Skies. I think it's going to sit at seven for a little bit. I really do. Um, I think th this is just my guess. I think by the end of the summer, I think we'll be like consistently 758. And then I don't know. I, I think maybe at the end of the year, maybe a thousand. But I said, I said end of the year. I mean, I, Last year I said I said five hundred and I was off by like a week. I yeah. said a thousand this year. We'll see if I'm off again. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, dude, it, people forget it stayed at four hundred for a long time. I think seven hundred is the number right now. I think it's going to cruise at seven hundred for a little bit, and then I think it'll gradually go up. But this is what you want to see. This is the slow growth. You don't want to see it like jump up to a thousand right now. Like it, it, you want it to wait, but. I definitely see the booster box going up to that price before the Umbreon. I mean, like a, a BGS 10 might hit um, the Latios Latios price, but probably already is. Dude, I could have got one from Dom for for nine hundred dollars a BGS 10, and I didn't like the centering. You mean you mean a pristine, right? Yeah, pristine, not the black label. Oh, the black label's like what four grand? Yeah, I was making sure. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Here, here's the other side of that, though, like. Um, God, what, I, what, I, I was trying to thought, what were we just talking about? The, the, the Umbreon hitting, uh, Latios Latios price or the evolving skies? Well, 700. To oh, oh yeah. The evolving skies. Yeah. So like when prices like rise quick, you know, you always have people jump on the bandwagon of this is being manipulated. It's being bought out all those things. But for the year, whatever, six months to a year where evolving skies was sitting at 400 stagnant. You had the same people saying, look, Modern Seal's terrible investment. Your money's sitting stagnant. You should have sold. You shouldn't have held. And it's like, guys, this is how collectibles move. They're not a steady 10% a year chart up. It, there's times of when things are down. There's times when they're stagnant. And then when collectibles move, it is usually moves like this. They usually jump pretty quickly. And then they go through a period of stagnation, maybe downturn. Then usually another jump. They don't They don't have these nice gradual up forever. Yeah. And so like, this is, this is normal movement, but everyone sees it as like, they want to portray it as like, this is being bought out. This is, you know, something, there's something wrong going on. But, but like the thing is like, see, 
I'm lucky because I, I saw it with Sun and Moon. I watched Ancient Origins do the same thing. Ancient Origins stayed at six hundred, seven hundred dollars for a year and a half, and then it hit a thousand. Right. Yeah. Um, and if you had took that year that year chart, you could have said this is a terrible investment. And then it's mm -hmm. like you take the three year chart. It's like looks great. <laughs> Dude, Cosmic did the same thing. It sat at, at $400, $500, and then it hit, you know, $900. So it, it, it's like, it's just a pattern. It's, it's just inevitable. Like, I'll guarantee that a year from today, Evolving Skies will be $1,000. I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee that. Guarantee, guys. We don't, we don't get a lot of guarantees here. A year from today, it's April 8th. So April 8th next year, it will be a $1,000 box. And I used I used to like go around and like try to like comment and like fight it. Like I don't even try to fight it anymore. It's not worth it. But it's like I do feel bad. I feel bad for the people who watch like channels that show those really short term data points, like six months a year, and they try to create this narrative of like it being bad investment you shouldn't be holding. And it's like those are the people that always get scared out, and then these kind of moves happen, and they they're kicking themselves. They they listen to it like guys. Just because your, your your modern goes through periods of stagnation does not mean it's dead. Does not mean it's never going to move again. No, <laughs> dude, it's insane. I, I think it's the best set of the decade. I mean, you take Team Up and you give Evolving Skies the same print run as Team Up. Evolving Skies is more expensive, and I don't even think Team Up's the best Sun and Moon set. If I'm being honest, I think Cosmic Eclipse is the best set. Oh, it absolutely it came up. If it was reprinted, like all the other sets were, it, it probably wouldn't be the top set. Uh, that's just my opinion. I mean, the Gengar is awesome. The Magic Carp's awesome. But I, I just, Cosmic Eclipse was my favorite. Where do you guys get your print run data? I don't, Jess, I don't get any print run data. Do you? Print run data? No. I asked my, uh, the owners of New World Manga, I say, hey, how are your allocations looking? And they'll tell me temporal forces. We're not getting as many as we thought we were, you know, like, yeah, that's about what I get from Eli about the same type of stuff. So it's, I, mean, I don't think anyone really truly knows the, the print run. It'd be nice though. Yeah. Imagine that. Lurkana versus one piece. Do you mess with Orkana at all? No, I mean, I opened it with my daughters because they love Disney, but, uh, I mean, it looks like a nice product. It's doing, it's not doing bad. It's doing well. It's killing it. You know, yeah. the Alpha and the, here's the thing. Like I was wrong in Lorcana. Like here, talk about like things you were wrong on. Um, I was wrong in Lorcana, but again, I'm okay with being wrong because at least I wasn't, didn't buy a bunch and was wrong and it all crashed. Like that was the first thing I think I disagreed with a lot of people because Disney like the way my daughters go over Disney princesses and everything like that. Uh, I didn't invest in it. Don't get me wrong. I, I just thought it had a lot of potential because it's Disney, right? Like everybody loves Disney no matter what. So I, I, I didn't think they were going to stay at the same price, but I also didn't know how many print runs it was going to do. Like, I didn't know if they were going to, uh, what was it called? The first set The I don't know. What's the first set called on uh, Disney Lorcana? Just the first chapter, right? First chapter, yeah. I, I thought it was be like a good hold because it was like the first Disney product ever out, like for a card set. Like I thought that was going to do well, but I didn't think the other sets were. But they all seem to be up right now. Yeah, I mean, even but like everything is like here, like like Samurai Seven saying about the the Star Wars Unlimited booster boxes. Like even those are are seeing huge rise. Dude, I love Star Wars. Like Dude, Star Wars. If you guys can see Star, this is like a Pokemon Star Wars room. I I love Star Wars. And this is not talking crap on Star Wars, but like guys, I feel like it's a, I feel like some of the big players and like, now we're getting into like me kind of talking about manipulation, but it's, it's somewhat manipulated. It's somewhat just like strategic, but I think people are realizing that Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, the big guys, they print to, they print enough, right? There's tons of printing. You can't, you can't run a market up out of the gate, right? I think people are realizing these newer TCGs, they're, they're testing out the first couple sets, right? They're not printing a ton because they don't know how it's going to be. People are realizing that, and it's like a guaranteed plague. It's like, oh, well, if we all buy a bunch of this new set, there's not enough supply. It's going to rise in price. And that's how you see it with everything. One Piece, Lorcana, Star Wars, even like a Dragon Ball Fusion. Like everything comes out of the gate when it's brand new, and it runs up now because there's just not enough supply on new card games like there is with Pokemon. It's not that they're all getting bought more than Pokemon. It's just 
this TCG world's got enough money in it to run these things up. What do you think about that? No, I agree with you. I'm I'm looking. I'm actually looking at it right now. It looks like what they're 250 right off the bat. This this is what we're talking about, right? It's like I, I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even know about this. Honestly, this is my first time hearing about a Star Wars limited set. Yeah, dude. It's just uh, and again, I'm not saying all these are long term holds, but they're almost like becoming no brainer plays. Like when a a big I and it's not everything, but when like a big even like sorcery, no IP, right? But when like a big IP releases a card game, it's just like, okay, jump yeah. in. But it's so tough. How how are you even gonna like even like uh my local game store, they didn't buy any of these, right? Like I was at my local game shop, they had them on the shelves for $89.99. I asked the manager, which I've known for seven, eight years now, right? Know them well. I said, Hey man, so what, what's the deal with these? They they sell them, like how, how much you got? We got a lot of them. Um they're, they're selling decent. It's going pretty well, but nothing, nothing crazy. Show up next week. Sold out. And box. <laughs> man, that's, I, I mean, are the, what are the cards like? Are they nice? Arts I haven't them? even looked into it, man. Like I, I didn't get in. It went without me. It's one of those things like one piece. Like I'm not paying a hundred, whatever dollars a box out of the game. $1,200. Okay. So $200, it looks like a piece. Yeah. Yeah, but see, that's not fun for me. It's not. I, I like being able to buy post, Pokemon booster boxes at ninety, ninety five, a hundred on release, right? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't get into things when, like, like I said, I love One Piece. They they killed it. They have an awesome TCG. Uh, the card quality is great. The art's great. But if you can't get it for retail out the gate, it's just not worth it. I love people giving me crap saying like, I've never heard Alex say he was wrong on anything. <laughs> like I yeah. said, I'm wrong on stuff before. I mo now luckily most, most things I've been wrong on are things that I like I'm wrong on not making the play. Right. Like yeah. I, I, I try not to be wrong on like losing money. Like I, I'm okay. Missing plays. I'm not okay. Losing money on play. So like, I, that's how I say I'm more conservative with stuff. Um, One piece was a flyer that I took, but again, when you're, when I'm you able to buy it, though. you bought a, you bought an entire case. Like at that time I bought a whole bunch of crown Zenith and she's like, Oh, you should grab this. And I was like, no, I'm good. I'll just take one box. You know, you bought the whole case and you 10 extra money. Yeah. I mean, like, and like I said, you could have done the same thing in, in Lorcana at this point too. So it's like, you know, if you went Lorcana route, you did good too. You know, I mean, I'm not, it's hey, just, how much, how much is the first chapter right now? People are telling me it's as much as a blue bottom. That's what they're saying in the chat. I haven't looked. No way, dude. <laughs> because I was like, you know what? I was like, I'll grab a case of four. No way is that much. Do you have them? No, I didn't buy it. Me either, man. Me either. Bro, this was even this is like two months ago, three months ago. I'm telling you, dude, it's wild. Yeah, this this market's so fast. It's so fast. How would he rank the 151 sealed investments? Blows your mind, doesn't it? Yeah, it blows my mind. That's insane. How would you rank 151 sealed investments? ETBs, UPCs, booster bundles? I think we got to add PC ETBs in there too, but. PC ETBs at the one. UPCs at the two. ETBs at the three. Booster bundles at the four. But if you're opening them, booster bundles are high on my priority because there's a hit in every one of them. So I am ex I am like the exact same route as you. Everything you said. Um, <laughs> a lot of people are going to be against us. Why, dude? I have I have like ten cases of PC uh, ETB. Dude, people are. Bro, imagine if Hidden Fates had PC ETBs. No, the the, the thing is, what I'm saying is, people are so they got caught up in that the scarcity of the booster bundles. And so they really think that the booster bundles are going to be like the next like booster box of like specialty sets. And I I've tried to show data to people like of booster bundles and other sets like crown Zenith or silver tempest, like going and they're not performing any, they're performing basically what the, the loose packs are worth. And I try to explain to people, look, these are going to be valued at what the sealed packs are valued at. Like if you can get a UPC with three promo cards or you can get a PC ETB with a, a stamp promo and like, and a scarce item, like those are going to be better than getting just a box with six packs in it with nothing else that 
you know, most likely is going to get reprinted. And it's like, no one wants to hear that. They, they just, they just think the booster models are like the, the new big thing. And I, I don't agree with it. I think it's going to, I'm going to be, I could be wrong on that, but I don't I think, think I'm going to got, got wrapped up in the scarcity. I had someone trying to sell me a master case, which is six booster bundle cases. Right. And they wanted an absurd amount of money for it. And I'm like, dude, no way. I was like, I can buy ETBs and I can buy the packs for cheaper. And he's like, well, I'm going to rip all these any anyway. So just give me the packs for the master case, right? Like add up to the packs of the master case. But like in the beginning, they were trying to value it because the booster bundles, like I said, if you're going to open them, they have a hit in every one of them. I, I've opened them before. They really have one good hit in every one of them. Um, so that's the only reason why it would be valued more because it is a consistent hit. And I've tested it because I've opened about like 30 of those booster bundles, right? And they all have at least a hit. Um, maybe that's the only way it's valuable because maybe the, the hit and that's why they're valuing it. But dude, I'd rather have PC ETBs all I, I, I Put it this way. I don't see a single sealed product in Sword and Shield or Scarlet and Violet that has a premium other than PC ETBs or booster boxes, right? Every collection box in 10 is valued at what the packs and promo cards or extra items are valued at. Um, every ETB is valued like a little, some are like a little over what the packs are worth, but basically you could, you could chalk that up to being the, the extras, the sleeves and dividers and coin, all that. Um, you know, you look at like uh, sleeved, you know, sleeved or three pack blisters. They have a little bit of a premium over just a straight loose pack, but even three pack blisters, they have a promo card, the, the blister, the, the check lane blisters, they have a promo card. Like you could say the sleeved blisters have a little bit of a premium over a, over a sealed pack, but you don't see any crazy premiums like you do it with booster boxes with these other items. And so I would always go where you can get the best value per pack. And like when EC, when UPCs were $80, $80 you right. got 16 packs plus three promo cards and you're buying booster bundles instead. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, like I said, the only thing that's good about the booster bundles is there's a good hit in it. But I, I don't know. For me, it's not a great display piece. Like, oh, I'm going to stack my little booster bundle. I mean, I don't know. Like, if you're going to open them, they're great. But that's just – that's my order. And I'd rather I'd rather have a PC ETB than a booster bundle. I'd rather have the yeah. UPC. People were paying like $30, $30 plus dollars for bundles. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just like – We're selling for like $40, bro. And even the people that are getting deals, you know, they were getting it for like 30. I'm like, dude, that's 90 bucks for 18 packs. You can get 16 packs plus free promo cards, a play mat, all that stuff for 80. When the, when the EPCs were so cheap, it didn't make sense. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. I mean, like I said, if you're opening them, there's a, there's a better hit in there than other things, but not for me. If you aren't concerned, you're a little concerned, you're arrogant or delusional. You aren't bulletproof and they're, are much much bigger fish. <laughs> oh, because I wasn't concerned about the people to. buying it. I don't know what that's even referring to. MD, yeah, you'll I, have to. I, I know what it is uh, because he's like, "What if uh, other people are, are doing the same thing as you?" The reason that I say I'm not concerned, it's not about money, bro. At the end of the day, like the shit I have, I get to open, right? Bro, I, I I own a plumbing business. This isn't my only source of income. So if I you could always fail, bro. I've, I've, I've had failings, right? Like I, I've failed multiple times and I just get up and I do it again. But at the end of the day, this is my collection, bro. I get to open this, right? If cosmic goes to zero, dude, I'll open it. I'll pull alt arts and I'll grade it and I'll enjoy it. So it's not yeah, about I think delusional. It's about me not giving a shit what happens because at the end of the day, it's still something I love to do. I think people are just afraid of failure and they don't, I don't know, like me and you both, like we've, we've like struggled. Like, I mean, when I, I sold my first company when I was uh, like 25, I think I was early twenties and me and my wife had just moved in our new house. She was working as a pharmacy tech, making like $15 an hour, couldn't afford the bills, you know? And uh, I sold my company, took the money out and I wanted to try to day trade full time. Right. And tried it for like six months a year. It just wasn't working. I mean, I didn't get, cr I didn't like lose all my money. But I wasn't making enough to make a living and I'd lose some. So like it wasn't working, right? And I literally just one day I said, all right, this ain't working. And I just said, okay, I'll just start another company. You know, went out and did the business thing, got it all legit, started making some flyers, literally went door to door for the whole week, got enough clients. When I when I got, had enough clients and enough jobs, I went out and started, bought a truck, bought the equipment, started up again, grew from there. It's just like if you, if you know how to go out and like market yourself and get work and make money, 
you're not as worried about like everything going wrong because it's like, if you've lost before, if you've taken losses and come back, you know, you can do it again. Well, the thing is, bro, like I, I never even talk about this. Like, dude, seven years ago, like when I, her and I split up like the, my ex or whatever, like, dude, I was at a point where I was lost. I had nothing, you know, and I went out, went out to Arizona literally with, with a, just a bag, bro. That's all I had seven years ago. Had nothing, right? Her and I split up. It was fucking the end of the world at the time. Go to Arizona, bro, with nothing but a bag. Go to Arizona, completely change my life, become positive. I lost everything. Everything was miserable, depressed, didn't know what to do. So I was someone that had nothing, no material things, nothing. Went out to Arizona, got a great job, right? I was out there. I had family in Arizona, got a great job. And then eventually I came back over here, came home, worked for another company. And, uh, bro, I just kept battling. I was, you know, my thing is I have a connection with God. You can say what you say, but that's what I believe in. And I, I created that connection. And I kept working hard and I was remaining positive. And one thing led to another, got a better job. And then like four years ago, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to start my own company, All right? Start my own company. And uh, I'm down to my last $3,000, right? I had 30,000, right? Invested it all after my truck payment, rent, shop, uniforms, tools, down to my last three grand. Had nothing, right? And I'm like, holy shit, I'm about to fail. And thank God I left, gave him my two weeks notice, right? Give them, um, we get hit with a hurricane, right? That first week I work from like seven in the morning to like 11 o'clock at night, every day, right? The next week comes, I'm still working, making money, making money, uh, working my ass off, you know, installing sump pumps. And at the time I had a stock of 25 sump pumps that I invested in. I was the only one that had sump pumps in the area. I was installing sump pump after sump pump after sump pump, right? Went down to Pennsylvania, picked up another 25. But after those two weeks, word of mouth got out and that's how my business grew. So I was down to my last three grand, right? Everyone's like, oh, you have this, you have that. It's not arrogance. It's like, dude, I've had my back against the wall with a bag in Arizona seven years ago, nothing to my name. And I turned into this because I gave it 110%. So yeah, if this fails, it's like having a bag in the middle of nowhere by yourself. You get back up and you go fucking even harder in it. So yeah. people don't know that about me, but it's like, dude, it's not arrogance. It's like, I gave it a hundred for 10%. I could fail. And if I do fail, I'll get up and I'll do it better. And I'll learn from my mistakes and I'll be unstoppable. And I've just lived by that now. Hey man, like take it that, back to the God thing. It's just like, and th this, this can be true, whether you're, you're a believer or not, like, you know, in the Bible, like talking about Solomon, it's like, he gets to the end of his life. He's been the richest person on the earth at that time. And he says that everything's vanity, everything's meaningless. And yes. it's like, you don't even, you don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to, to, to understand that guys, everything's meaningless. Your, your spot in your company, how high you get on the corporate ladder, how much stuff you acquire, how successful you get. The, everything is literally meaningless. And all that's really going to matter is like, you know, what you do for people, like how you live your life, like, you know, all this stuff. It's like, so when you realize that you don't put as much stock in it, you're not as afraid of like losing this little small spot that you have in this world right now. Like I can't lose my what I have, because then it's like, you don't, you don't worry as much and you just kind of move forward. And I mean, I, I've just, I, once you get that grasp, it, it literally, it, it, it eases your mind and allows you to like be more open for, I mean, not just risk, but just be more open for life to not worry about like all the doomsday or negative things that could happen to you. Yeah, man. It's just like, you can't think of the negative. Always look forward and keep it moving. Like it's, it's not about arrogance. It's just like, bro, the places I've been in for what I have, like, dude, I'm just grateful for, it. I always say that if you notice, like I'm all my posts, I always say I'm grateful, 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 but it's like, if it goes to zero, man, like I'll have fun opening it. Like there, like I don't, I try not to look, there's always a silver lining at the end of the day. Right. Did, like, everyone's like make plan. Everyone, everyone. And I heard, you know, rusty TCA gaming. I heard him give an interview. I can't remember where it was. I can't remember if it was Pokemon Wonder or if it was on with uh, David Person and, and uh, DJ Gigabyte. But I remember him saying something like, people try to like plan out their lives too much. And like, he's talking like, dude, I'm just living day to day. Like, you know, it's like, and that's how you have to be. It's a like people try to like plan, make all these plans. Like, oh, this year, one year, five year, 10 year, I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be there. It's like, dude, your life could change tomorrow. You could, you could get sick. You could, you could be in a hospital bed. You, you might, you could not be working the next, you know, two years, like everything, your whole house could burn down. Like, you know, your, all, all your family, it's like, 
anything can happen day to day. Like trying to like worry about worrying about your life isn't gonna get you anywhere. Like the best you can do is just be happy, do the best you can for people, do the best you can for yourself and your family each day. That's it. Yeah. At the end of the day, dude, what Matt, like I love my Pokemon collection, but at the end of the day, it's my daughter, my soon to be son and my, my two daughters, my soon to be son and my wife. Like, dude, I have everything I need. That's the most valuable stuff in this house. There you go, man. This is, this is, this is brought up a lot, right? Hot take. People want to be the next CTR hoarding booster boxes, or it's always like the next Rudy. All we have a bunch of closet investors, like mini Rudy's. It's like, guys, no one has to try to be someone just because they're trying to make money. It's like, are we all trying to be the next Warren Buffett? Like, are we all trying to be the next, uh, if we're investing in Bitcoin, we, it's like, are we all trying to be the next, you know, somebody is, was, was Mark Zuckerberg trying to be the next Tom from MySpace? Is, you know, it's like, I mean, what are we doing here? It's like, can I no one else like make money in, in an area or without trying to be the next person yeah. who did it first? Yeah. It, it's just like, I'm not the first one to start a plumbing company, but I want to be, the next yeah. plumber. I just want to be myself, man. This is what I do. This is my money. This is what makes me happy. Like I don't like all these other guys. They have cool positions. Like shout out to cool trainer Ryan Hanger Gang. He's the man. But like I, he's not the reason that I, I buy this stuff, right? It's like because I enjoy it. it. It's not like I'd be insane to go out and buy all these cases because I want to be like someone. You get no, you get nowhere if you're trying to follow people, man. You always want to be a leader. I, I said, I, I, I've told this story a million times, like when I started, but like, I mean, Rudy didn't have anything to do or like, I mean, Cool Trainer Ryan, I didn't know about him back. Then. I didn't know about really anyone. I was watching like Lee and Hart and stuff. But when I started investing in Pokemon and stopped like just buying it and collecting it and spending money was literally when a friend of mine came to my house, saw all the cool stuff I'd been buying from my childhood, went home and started, but he wanted to start buying stuff. And he gave me a call. He said, Hey, how much did you say you paid for those base set packs? I said, Oh, $25. He's like, I'm seeing their 50 or $60. I'm like, oh, you don't know how to use eBay here. I'll, I'll, gotta, I'll, I'll show you how. And I get on and I, I'm searching. I'm like, well, wait a second. And then I look at all the sold listings. I'm like, wait a second. So then that's where it all clicked. And we started talking and we started making moves and buying and selling and holding things starting there as an investment. And then from there, I found Rudy's channel. I found SM Pratt. But like, I didn't like see those guys and then want to emulate them or be them it just kind of evolved into finding them and then those kind of reaffirmed like the, the beliefs i already had but it wasn't like i'm trying to be them you know no but it was like you said affirming your beliefs and you know it, it, it makes you feel sane that you're not the only one doing it too you know and i mean if you look at these guys collection like uh cool trainer ryan rudy like don't, that that is cool to see like i'd love to be on that level but it's like not about following it's just like doing your own thing everyone has their own path you know and it's you could use it as inspiration or you know to make you grind harder but uh, go have you guys been tempted to buy out a card like chilling rain Moltres only has 31 near mint copies on tcg player do you ever do buyouts man i know you have you you've done it before right I have back in the day, yeah. Yeah, I I did it with like uh like the first, remember when I told you I bought off a troll and told and you're like I can't believe it. So that's like something that I bought like as many copies as I could from them, you know. But it wasn't anything crazy. It it was just like uh the Lugia, um from Neo. Like I bought as many copies as I can. But like I did, I didn't know what I was doing back then. I just wanted to buy them and grade them. And then I bought uh, a couple other like newer stuff too. I mean, I did the, the, I will say like, if you're doing something like that, the market conditions have to be right. Like, like they are right now, like the market conditions have to be right. You know, you have to always anticipate more coming to market as the price rises. So you have to have enough capital ready to do it. Um, you know, you have to have a good vehicle in terms of being able to sell them because they inevitably will come back down. Usually like there's a lot that goes into doing buyouts. Like I haven't done anything like that in years, but uh, yeah, I've done it before. It's worked out well for me. I, I, I focused on PSA nine cards back then of uh, like some of the vintage stuff where like the 10 multiples were just insane or there weren't like any tens on the market and the nines were just like too low seemingly. And so it was easy to make the play, but uh, it, it just, it's, it's really hard. You, like, like, like we talked about, there's thousands and thousands of pop report. There's even more near mint copies out there. You got to have some coin if you're going <laughs> to, be doing bias these days yeah i mean it's a beautiful card i love that card i pulled that in the car of um walgreens with my kids like those two pack the evolving skies and chilling rain packs they had them and i opened it and i pulled that moltres i was so excited i didn't have a sleeve or anything i was like what do i do 
It's still graded a 10. I made it home like this. I was just holding it driving. But that card is, is a cool card by, if, if you can buy them all. But I don't know. There's so many of them. I don't know if you're going to affect the, anything with it. That's a tough card. It, I mean, it's like a short term, right? Like you, you probably can for the short term because just like we just like we saw with the with what were the the iron leaves and the what was the other one the big one um in in temporal the the top hit in temporal like how it got it ran up to like two hundred and seventy four dollars or something and had a sale like obviously it can happen it's just uh but you saw it come really far back down after that so <laughs> it's it's a speed game are you seeing any question you want to take oh I have a question for you. Yeah. You, you got to pick one. Lost Origin, Brilliant Stars. Lost Origin. Lost Origin. And I'm I'm and I I'm with you. I like Brilliant Stars, but I've come to terms with I'm I'm the minority. I've come to terms with Garatina is just more powerful than I ever expected. I, I realized this last night when I was looking at the last solds. Like, dude, even right now, Lost Origin selling more than Brilliant. I, but I think, right, once they're off of Pokemon Center, right, once they're off of Pokemon Center, I think they're going to make uh, Chilling Rain and Fusion Strike look like nothing, like, compared to what they're going to do. Really? Yeah. Uh, so you're, I, thinking, you're thinking, like, 250, 300. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, 250 at, like, the minimum. Interesting. Like, at least with Lost Origin. I, I'm telling you, I just – dude, because, like, from my point of view – like uh, what I saw a lot is every time people wanted those collection boxes, if it would have like Brilliant Stars, Fusion Strike, and Chilling Rain, they'd want to open it because the Brilliant Stars in the collection box, right? No one ever talked about Chilling Rain or Fusion Strike, right? They'd want to open the Brilliant Stars. So well, I, I mean, I remember people talking about it two years ago, and uh, they were they were saying these boxes are going to be sub one hundred for years. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> I just think uh, I think Brilliant and Lost Origin are just. I, I'm telling you, I think like once they sell out, it's two fifty. Maybe I think Lost Origin is going to be like the highest growing out of all the sets after um, after Obama's guys. Someone uh, Evo is asking you about EV Heroes. Like, are you are you moving into any like Japanese lately besides one fifty one or? No, I, I have EV heroes. I have like three up here. I have some EV heroes. I had a case, and then you're, I was, not, you're not picking any more up with these prices. No, I'm not picking. What are they at now? Like four hundred? Uh, I, dude, you're asking me Japanese prices? Come on. Yeah, Come I mean, EV heroes was an anomaly, so I I, I grabbed a, a couple of those, but I, I was chasing uh the moon brown, but that was another thing. I pulled like two Flareon V's, the Vaporeon. A Gordy, so I just stopped. Op I I cracked open a case and I was chasing it, and then they just kept growing, so I didn't buy any more. And you pretty much held all of them. No, I only have uh, I have like five left, five all together. I wish I had more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think I mean like <sighs> Japanese market, man. It's like. I, I, I mean, again, I'm not a Japanese guy, so I don't like to talk about it much. People think I'm just hating on Japanese because I don't like it. But I just think it's uh, it's going through a lot of the same type of um, movement that, like, Pokemon did back in 21 in English. Like, back like all the vintage was reaching as highs and everything fell off and stays, it has been stagnant for a long time now. Um, I think, like, Japanese is going to go through a lot of that now. There's going to be sets. There's going to be specialty sets. There's going to be certain cards and sets that do well. But like, man, buying in any like regular booster boxes right now, that's brutal. Yeah, I mean, dude, it, Japanese was always like that though, and then they had that crazy boom because like even like with Lost Abyss, um, what was it? No, it was Brilliant Stars with the RCS on it. What was that called? Uh, Starbirth. Starbirth. With those sets, they were cheap, man. And then they had that that crazy Japanese boom, and they just went insane. So like, this is like the normal for Japanese. Like, dude. dude People forget they only retail forty dollars, so I don't know. I think it's a, not a bad time to buy. Like, if you see a Japanese set that you like, scoop it up for low right now. Like, I think uh, if you're if we're talking Japanese, I think uh, V Star Universe is still a good buy, and that's low. I'm telling you what, man, my one fifty one Japanese might be my first Japanese pickup ever. <laughs> buy it all. <laughs> Buy it like I said, if it, if, it, if it drops to what I think it should, I probably will. Dude, if it, I, but like the thing is, keep that in mind that 
you and I, I hear a lot of people saying this right now. We're going to do the same thing. So I think that's what's going to stop it from going sub hundreds. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking of day trading. So it's a bad idea. <laughs> Very hard to be successful at it. There are people that are um, a lot of the people that you see acting like they are are usually selling a course or they are, uh, you know, it's fake trading. They just show their wins like kind of like Pokemon sometimes. Um, it's not that it's not possible. It's just you almost have to be a robot. You have to have no emotion. You have to really believe in, in whatever, however you're trading. And some people are successful at it, but very few and far between. So it's, it's risky, man. It's risky. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Like, I've never I'm, I'm much more successful. Like I'm much more successful with my trading now because everything I do is like a swing trade. So like I'll, I trade our, me and my wife's both of our IRAs. I trade my own brokerage account. Um, and you know, sometimes positions are short. Like sometimes I feel like it just, I move in something and it just happens to jump over and then in the one week up like 20, 30%, I'll sell it. Like, but like sometimes a lot of my time, my positions are like two, three, six months. So like it, they're longer term. Like I'm not trying to like make money every single day. Um, but, and so I'm a lot more successful now. But uh, man, like trying to make a full time living, constantly having to take income out of the market, it's uh, it's a lot. It's a lot harder. A lot harder. You do you, you mess around with it at all? Or you just kind of put it to work and let set and forget. I like it. Yeah. No. Do you think compared to other sets, Sword and Shield is being held and invested more, which makes it more risky? It seems like more. There's definitely a lot more people holding Sword and Shield than Sun and Moon, X and Y. Like, I feel, I mean, I still feel confident with Sword and Shield after seeing, like, these little growths, right? But uh, I feel more confident in my Sun and Moon, if I'm being honest, right? Like, I think Cosmic's always, but, like, I, I don't know. I, I Like, the proof, it's literally happening. And it's hard to, you know, manipulate all these sales at 220 for Fusion Strike. So it's like, I don't know. I'm feeling pretty confident with it, man. So you're, guys, you're still picking up Sun and Moon boxes. You picked up some Cosmic. You pick, you picked up some, you, you picked up what, Unified Minds case lately? Yeah, because that's, a, so I already had a good amount of Unified Minds, but the only way he would sell me the Cosmic was if I bought the Unifieds. And I was with this guy and he was supposed to buy the Unifieds and I was buying the Cosmic since it was a good deal. And he, at the last second, he's like, oh, I, I don't want to pay that amount. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't want to pay the amount? So then uh, I looked at the guy and I was like, will you do it for this price? And I took like $300 off the whole total. And he's like, I'll get back to you. And then I was like, dude, I'm the only one buying it, right? Like he's, he's out. So he ended up just giving me the deal and we got it done. But I didn't want another Unifieds. I had enough. But that was the only way I was going to get the Cosmic case for a good price. And yeah. what I what bought it for, I could probably sell for way more right now but like the deal was too good but I mean, i'm actually i'm actually scared i'm actually like i'm afraid when i see a text from you now that you're in your house now that you now that you're back having your normal disposable income i don't even know i don't even want to see what you're going to start sending me like what 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 are what are your big pickups going to be in the months to come dude i'm just going to keep buying brilliant stars and lost origin off pokemon center right now if you want me to be honest I'm just going to keep grabbing those until they're sold out. I like it. That's just, that's what I'm doing with my money, right? I'm being transparent. Like right now, I, I just bought another lost case last night. And every time I say I'm going to buy a brilliant, I've now I'm at like three loss and one brilliant. So I don't know. I'll probably buy, and keep in mind, I have a lot of lost already, but I just, uh, Dude, it's buying money. If they're selling at twelve hundred right now, you can get at nine eighteen after taxes. This is this is one of the only times in the hobby, by the way, where I, I I've never seen this in like what nine years I've been in this hobby. Never seen everyone across the entire hobby agree on this one thing. I feel like no one is disagreeing That's that LO scary. and Rose stars are a buy right now. Yeah, it's wild, right? And like you know what's funny is. Again, no, no, nothing's guaranteed, but I'm sure they're going to be $300 boxes in the near future in the next, you know, one, two, three years. Dude, and everyone's going to be saying, I wish I would have bought back. It's like, wh where were you at? Buy it. They're everywhere. I mean, they're available. But there's always going to be people like that that don't buy it until it sells out, right? <laughs> like, 
that's I see that all the time. It's like you could have bought Chilling Rain at eighty dollars, no one wanted it. It hit one hundred fifty, then people were like, "Oh, it got my attention," and then it hits two hundred, and then everyone's buying it at two hundred. So I just feel it's like the same with like um, like when a a, a, you, a card first comes out and it's Chase card, right? And like someone grades it or they grade the cards, like everyone's paying top dollar for the first card that's graded. You see it all the time. Like the Bubble Mew was selling through the roof when it first came out. It's like, why don't you just wait two weeks? It's going to drop after, you know, you see the like Charizard. Charizard. The Paldean Fate Charizard was 600s. Now yeah. it's 300. But it's like that every time. Oh my God. Do you remember the Champions Pathzard? How much that was? That was insane. The Hidden Fates Zard used to be $1,200. Yeah. 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 That, that's one of the big ones. Honestly, the 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 Brilliant Stars Zard has held up probably better than any of them. Yeah, I mean, what's it ever? It, it was, I mean, not, sorry, not, sorry. I, I, my, not Brilliant Stars. Yeah, Burning Shadows. Like, Burning Shadows. Oh, yeah, bro. Because do you know how hard it was to get that in a 10? I know. That thing is just, it stood the test of time. It stood the test. And it was impossible to pull. Yeah. That was a tough – dude, I never pulled that either. And I, I watched a thousand – I remember Darium's Pokemon. Do you, do you remember Darium's Pokemon? Who is it? They were called Darium's Pokemon back in the day, man. Oh, and he's the one that had all the boxes, and he opened all those boxes of them, and he had, like, a stack of booster boxes. I mean, he, he did a thousand-pack opening. Yeah. I pulled know. One, one. One Charizard. Yeah. Like, <laughs> dude, the pull rates of these cards, it's like when you compare it to, like – you know, a vintage box where you open two or three boxes and you get every card in the set, like base set. It's just, it's so astronomical to even compare them. I mean, <laughs> Burning Shadows is tough because you went from X, Y. I remember I opened uh, like Faith Clyde. I pulled the Alakazam easily. I opened the Breakthrough. I pulled the Mewtwo really. I pulled both Mewtwo's, right? And like then Burning Shadows, dude, <laughs> I chased it. I didn't get it. <laughs> XY, basically a case would get you the set. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. But that's that's kind of what they did with the Obsidian Flames. Like, dude, that was – you would pull every card in Obsidian Flames, and people are like, I hate it. I mean, it's fun, too. It's fun opening, you know, Scarlet and Violet because you're getting a lot of – you're getting a lot of pulls. Kind of makes it, like, fun again. But then they're like, oh, Temporal is going to do good because the pull rates are hard. You can't ever make everybody happy, bro. That's it. Just wait till they start the serialized. Dude, if they if Pokemon does serialized, I don't even want to know what those prices are going to be. Dude, I don't, if it'll ever happen. Did a one of one Zard, what that set would do, like the, what uh, Magic did with Lord of the Rings. Imagine if Pokemon did a one of one alt art Zard, right? That'd be like a five million dollar card. Those boxes would be like a thousand dollars after the release. Oh, that'd be fun, man. That'd be fun. I think it would be awesome. I, but, dude, that would cause so much mayhem. Oh, people would be pissed at that. Could you imagine all the all the videos, all the negativity, and all the kids and all this stuff? Dude, because you know how people get, man. Like, <laughs> you think the stuff happening at Costco at 151 or the Evolving Skies was mayhem? This would be – oh, my God. Remember that in XY, the – that Magikarp that was released at Target? Yeah. It would be like that. That's the one I graded tons of. Yeah, yeah it would be crazier than that. <laughs> but it would be cool. Imagine if you pull that thing, then you're a multi-millionaire right off the bat. There you go. And you know what? We need something like that, right? <laughs> I, think, I think it's a neat idea. I, I just want – if they did serialize, I, I would be curious because then you know no more reprints. Right, like with Magic Brothers War, it didn't have any more reprints because they did serialized. So if if Pokemon, I don't, I just don't see Pokemon doing that. I don't know why. I just, I don't. I know it sucks. I, I would love for a set not to get a reprint. <laughs> Dude, oh. uh, yeah. man, we've been going for like two and a half hours, bro. Is there oh. is there anything else you want to talk about before we cut things out? I don't know. I don't, <laughs> dude, just right now, if I can leave you with anything, just dude, brilliant stars, lost origin, one hundred and fifty-one. Like those are those are my buys right now, and I know they. So you're not you're not worried about one hundred and fifty-one reprint, like for English. 
Oh, I think they're going to do it. They're You're definitely still just buying them. Yeah, I mean, not a, what are they at? Well, I could still get them for a good price from that guy that you talked to, Tim. You get so, oh you're yeah you're getting what ETBs for like what was it it was a it was it's a it's like the cheapest out there yeah yeah I mean it's like retail like four hundred dollars a case I don't remember. is that retail I don't know it's probably I, mean, I know they're like in the five hundreds right now yeah so he was giving them to me he still has two more cases for me but. I don't know, but they were they were a really good price. So yeah, if you can get them at that price, I mean, don't spend like five hundred. But they're de if they're gonna reprint any set in Scarlet and Violet, I would think it would be that set. Yeah, you know, or or Pal Day Evolved. How do you feel about Crown Zenith? I love Crown Zenith. I mean, dude, here's the thing: like people are like down on it because of the reprint, because of how uh, you know, how the price has been stable, like stagnant for a while. It's like all I know is one fifty one in Crown Zenith are always the most open packs on my live stream box breaks. Bro, Crown Zenith. Dude, when I have 151 Crown Zenith, those get open, man. Yeah, Crown Zenith is great. I mean, I'm sitting, you just bought a, how many more cases? Like five more cases? Four, yeah, four more. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sitting, those are probably the most ETB cases I have. And then I have some Hidden Fates, 151. Like, uh, those are the sets I went heavy with. Like, Pokemon Go, I finally got rid of those cases. Um, I took a little bit of a loss on those. <laughs> I mean, I, when you say a loss, like it's like what a few hundred bucks, like a couple hundred bucks. No, no, no. I I was able to get rid of it for for three fifty a case. So that's not. I lost like fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, like a hundred fifty bucks. So not much. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, but it's still it's weird. That's why I tell people it's like that. This, these are like worst case scenarios. Like worst case scenarios in this hobby is like things either don't move or they trail down a little bit with sealed product. It's like, you don't get crushed like you could in other places. Like take the stock market. Like, I mean, you can literally lose half your money. I mean, if you invest in single stocks, you can lose all your money. It's like, we've never seen a Pokemon product. You lose all your money in. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, mean, I like, I don't know. Pokemon go. I, I still think it'll eventually go up. If, if Crimson Invasion can go up then Pokemon go can go up in time. Yeah. In time, but the Crown Zenith, I, I still think is a buy. And if you could still get them for a good, what were you paying three fifty a case? Yeah, but I think they're in the open market for like three nineties. Yeah, so I, I still think that's I still think Crown Zenith is a buy. I still have it up as like a top five sword and shield set, top six. Yeah, like it's up there. Yeah. It's probably the the best specialty set in um in sword and shield. It is. Yeah. So you, so, okay. I have a question. So, you, you know, I'm coming to New Jersey Collecticon. Yeah. You're, you're vending. Yep. What do you vend? If you don't want to sell anything, what do you sell? Uh, I just sent a whole bunch of slabs to get great or a whole bunch of uh, raws to get graded. Okay. So I'll, I'll have a lot of slabs. So none, you know, none of that stuff behind you is going to be there. Nah. No, I mean, that. how many months is that? We still have... April, May, June, July. We still have three more months, so who knows what kind of deals I'll get in three months when I'm back on the grind buying again. Yeah. You know, I might buy a couple good lots, and then if the lots make sense, I don't know. I don't, so it's most, you mostly just move slabs there. Yeah, I mean, but I'm, obviously my main reason for going is buying stuff at a percentage, right? Like I hope if you go to Collecticon, bring me like your sealed and your, and your slabs. I'll pay you more than anyone else. But yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, because dude, everyone's offering 75, 70, 80 percent. Like, dude, if someone's gonna offer them 80, I'll I'll offer them 88 percent, right? If I if I want to be them. careful saying that, there's a lot of people listening to this. Yeah, if it's, <laughs> you're gonna have a lot of stuff coming to your booth. <laughs> if you have if you have sealed booster boxes and you want to sell them to me at 88 percent, right? I'll take them. You can't go wrong with that. Uh oh. Uh oh. Come on, come sell me your flash fire at eighty eight percent. Would you still buy Evolving Skies booster boxes even now? Um, I offered someone, I think thirty. What was it? On, I think I offered them thirty four hundred for a case. Seven hundred? No. On. What, what, what's what's six hundred times six? That's thirty six hundred. Yeah, that's a, that's quite a bit under market though. 
Yeah, I try getting it, but sometimes they say yes. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. So, yeah no. So I, a case, if a case is four grand, you'd be eighty eight or eighty five, eighty eight percent of market would be roughly what, like thirty five hundred, something like that. Yeah, I mean, I just I have so many now that it's like, if the deal makes sense, I'll get it right. But if it doesn't make sense, uh, but. Believe it or not, people come and they, they give me these deals that just make so much sense. Yeah, some of the deals you tell me, it just I, I if I didn't know you as well, I'd be like, it has to be a lie. It's just like it's crazy some of the stuff you get. Yeah, I offered thirty five hundred for the case, and he said, oh, "Oh, he goes, okay, that's pretty fair." And he wanted cash, so I would have met up with him and gave him cash. But that's probably the max I'm paying on those right now, which is still because, because the, dude, you're stabilizing at like six fifty, seven hundred right now. Well, it's all you're going to get. I mean, he's not going to get more selling it online. So, no, no. So, that's it'll benefit both of us. But yeah, that'd probably be the most expensive. Like, I would most I've spent on a, a Bobby Sky's case right now. Someone in your, someone, someone said in my Discord, all top hits sold out fast and people were selling above market. Is that normal at cons? Not from my experience. Um, my experience is. Here's how I handle cons is I don't then, but I, I walk around. I try to find the booths because I'm, I'm looking to grade. But if you're looking to buy slabs, you don't have to do this. But I, I look at the booths who don't have slabs. They just have singles or and sealed or something. And I just like, I'll start looking. I just strike up conversations. I try to talk to the people. Um, I try to find a good amount of cards and I try to work a deal. And then I'll bring out the cash and try to get another deal with cash. And usually it gets down pretty good under market, like under TCG player near mint pricing. Um, I've had very good luck, even like sealed stuff I've bought have been, uh, under TCG pricing. So maybe it's different this year because the market's crazy. I don't know. Like, what do so, you, what do you see? So a couple, I'm not going to say who it is, but one of, uh, one of my buddies and like, they joined like a group of another big guy, like his new thing he says to me is like, at con, I'll sell it for that. At con, I'll sell it for that. I'm like, bro, you're $300 over comps, Right. But people do pay more at cons, I guess, because you're like you're in. And what is it? What is this for? For everything, bro. Uh, booster packs, slabs, sealed, right? It's all upcharged, right? Because they they always say, "Oh, at con, I won't have a uh, problem selling." Because you're in that environment, right? And you feel people will feel like pressured, or they want to be like, "Oh, I'm cool. I'm spending this." Like you see it all the time, unfortunately. And yeah, people buy money to spend. Yeah, I mean, they bring money to spend. They bring money to spend, right? So I, I see that happen all the time. When I first got in a hobby, like I didn't know that I was overpaying on on slabs, right? Like there was times where I was buying a, you know, Ultra Prism at three hundred dollars a box, right? When that was way too much, but I didn't know better, right? Like I didn't know the market yet. So I'm not saying they take advantage of people, but a lot of people overcharge at, at cons. Nowadays, I won't even deal with them, right? Like, I, like you said, I'll walk around, I'll talk to people. Now, I, I'm, I know a lot of people in this hobby, so there's no more like bullshit in between, right? That is like, all right, give me your real price, right? Like, that's what I say. Don't give me your sticker, give me your real price. Um, but that you do see it quite often. People gouging a little bit at cons. Yeah, yeah, that's. I truth. guess I just haven't experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. But then you see people that are just like happy to overpay too, which it doesn't make sense. But like I said, it's just people don't know better. Like we take all this information, like all these negative things that happen to us in the hobby and all these positive things we've learned so much. And like, we forget like, uh, like that people don't know as, as well as we do. Right. Like I, I, mean, I here's the thing. It's like some things, I mean, it's slabs a different story, but even slabs like we talked about people like really in the condition, like maybe they're trying to cross grade it, but like there's, there's situations where I will, I would pay over price for a, a, a raw. I mean, geez, oh, if yeah, I look at the card. Gonna hit a 10, yeah, I would do that yeah. too. But say like a graded card and you know, you don't even see comps hitting that price, but they're like, Oh, it's a really good copy. And like, dude, I, I see it all the time. Yeah. And the same thing with like retail stores, you know, with sealed product, it's like, well, yeah, the sealed product's right in front of your face. You have it in your hands. You can buy it right there. Like that's how game stores upsell booster boxes the same way. It's like, there's always going to be kind of that retail higher, but like 
No, I, I, I would say to you, um, Jimbo, you know, uh, know the market, talk to the people. A lot of people are going to work with you, and especially if you're, you know, buying a, a good amount from them, if you're spend, spending cash, whatever it may be. Um, I don't think there's a reason to pay much above market on a lot of stuff. Um, also, guess what? There's hundreds of people vending there. If one person's, you know, kind of being an asshole, go to the next guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh uh, man, what Discord groups you recommend? The only Discord group, the Nostalgianomics Discord. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. There's a, there's a lot of Discords out there. Um, man, I've got, I think we should wrap things up. We got he, Pokemon Plumber. He's got a wife and kids. He has to get to man. We can't talk all night. Yeah, I gotta go eat dinner, and I got a well, I got a water softener job in the morning. Nice. That's those are your bread and butter. You said right. Love those. Love doing water softeners, bro. So nice. tomorrow's a good day. No, dude, I, I appreciate you having me on here. No, I'm having one too for a while. I'm glad we finally got a chance to again. Yeah, dude, that's, this is nice. But and I'll be able to see you in a few months and uh, yeah, we'll have like a good time. Good. Yeah, dude, you're going to come over and swim, right? The pool's going to be – oh, yeah, the pool be up and running? The pool's going to be up and running, yeah. I, dude, hope, I hope there's nothing wrong with it. I have to do the HVAC like next month. That's one thing I have to do is new HVAC system. <laughs> I forgot about that. But yeah, everything will up, up and running. Yeah, dude, we're gonna have a blast. I can't wait. Oh yeah, for sure. What are you gonna All do right, man. Well, guys, thanks everyone for showing up tonight. It's been a great combo. Um, as always, guys, uh, Pokemon Plumber's link is in the description. His Instagram, um, always posting, always posting fire, dude. You post. You talk about me posting a lot, dude. I mean, you have like five stories at least going at all times. It's wild. Like yeah, you're guys, posting all day on Instagram. We got to keep the people entertained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to stay entertained, uh, follow his Instagram. He's got he's got content all day long on there. So that's all we got, guys. We're gonna call it there. Anything else? That's it. By Lost Origin, by Billion Stars. Buy it. Buy it. Later. Later.